You've got 10 seconds to beat it before I add you to the list of NSF casualties. Ah, the Paris nightlife. Have a taste of wine for me, JC. I'm a prototype of a much larger system. You sent him because you knew he would fight to the death. I spill my drink. This is gonna make a great story. In a former life, I was a mule dragging a stone plow up a hill in northern Thailand. Same. French philosopher Georges Bataille thought that the purpose of life was to waste the energy of the sun. Deus Ex is a legendary first-person RPG released in the year 2000. It's a game about plague, disinformation, finances and technology, secret plots, riots and collapse. Not topical at all. The game is ancient. If you haven't played Deus Ex by this point, you are basically a criminal, a traitor to gamer kind. I will personally rat you out to the cops. Take them away! I assume most of you have either played it, or watched a video or two, or absorbed some of its story details via cultural osmosis. We take on the role of J.C. Denton. It's possible to input whatever name you want, but the game's characters will always refer to us as Denton. Take a look at the portrait. This is the first and last time we are seeing JC without his sunglasses. And this is the game's skill system. Like it is the case with many boomer RPGs, there are a lot of meaningless options. The single most important skill is computers. Many challenges in Deus Ex are solved by hacking computers. One can argue that the skill is actually too powerful, like speech in Fallout 2. Handguns are excellent weapons, but it's important to deselect them on this screen because as soon as the game starts, we'll get one level for free. Being trained at picking locks and disabling electronic devices is immensely helpful. Among these two, electronics usually ends up being slightly more important. And that's it for the character creation. Our globe-trotting adventure begins. Your appointment to FEMA should be finalized within the week. I've already discussed the matter with the senator. I take it he was agreeable? He didn't really have a choice. The world is ravaged by a disease called the Great Death. There is a vaccine, but the supply is limited and even the fact of its existence is being hidden from the public. The US government, increasingly dysfunctional and authoritarian, no longer controls large swathes of the country. Some duties have been delegated to the UN agencies. Everybody knows that Bob Page is the world's richest man, but that's about all everybody knows. Who is he, really? What does he want? We've had to endure much, you and I, but soon there will be order again. A new age. Aquinas spoke of the mythical city on the hill. Soon that city will be a reality and we will be crowned its kings. Not better than kings. Gods. Nineteen of the last 23 U.S. presidents have been members of the Trilateral Commission. That's a think tank. Anyone can become a member. Despite being released a year before 9-11, the New York skyline in Deus Ex is missing the Twin Towers. This is not some sort of an extraordinary act of premonition, it's just the skybox had to be compressed for reasons related to memory constraints. Welcome aboard, Agent. We are an agent of the United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition, or UNATCO. Welcome to the coalition, JC. I might as well start using your code name. The guy we're talking to is Paul, our brother. Both JC and Paul are technological prototypes of sorts, humans enhanced with nanotechnology. The NSF terrorists attacked Liberty Island and took one of our agents hostage. Paul offers us a choice of weapons. This is actually one of the more important choices we'll make in this game. A gap gun is a sophisticated rocket launcher that is incredibly useful in exploration, because it allows us to blow up locked doors and crates. The one disadvantage of having a gap gun is that it takes a lot of inventory space. Tetris-style inventories are my favorite. Deus Ex compartmentalizes certain stackable items, like keys, into their own separate list inventories so they don't clutter the screen. NSF everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot on sight. A UNATCO informant on the North Dock can get you inside the statue. We don't actually have to shoot on sight. There are quite a few non-lethal weapons available early. My favorite is a hand crossbow with tranquilizer rounds. Yeah, we got the whole supply. You can see the ship's lights crossing the bay. So why aren't we pulling out? Mike's on the horn. Jojo wants a lead on the distribution network. The National Secessionist Forces, or NSF, are a sophisticated insurrectionist organization, as well as a popular political movement. Both the UN and the US classify them as a terrorist group. But, you know, one man's terrorist. About time you showed up. Iron and copper. The statue is copper on an iron frame, right? 
Passwords enough, pal. Don't think you know something about the lady I don't. The movement has a large support base in major urban centers. Many Americans see the NSF as liberators from an increasingly dysfunctional US government. Don't take weapons into the lady. That makes you as bad as Janatko. Don't forget, it was the NSF that C4 the statue in the first place. Strange. Neither NSF or the French silhouette ever took responsibility for the bombing. The decapitation of the Statue of Liberty was the reason the feds allowed UNATCO to operate on American soil. And our HQ is right here, on Liberty Island. It's symbolic, you see. When you play the game for the first time without knowing all these backstory details, it's really jarring to be hunting terrorists at one moment and then turning the corner and finding a huge fuck-off military military facility full of friendly soldiers. What are you guys doing? JC just graduated from the academy. He shouldn't be rescuing hostages by himself. Be careful. The NSF has set up patchwork security systems here. Our introduction to computers. In order to hack a computer, you press the hack button. That's it, that's the mechanic. Getting access to security terminals is important because they allow us to turn off cameras, open locked doors and reprogram gun turrets. Rescuing the UNATCO operative is a side objective. Neutralizing the terrorist leader is our primary goal. Glad you're not hurt, Agent. Command should not have left us to be surrounded. Gunter Herman is what they call a mech, an older type of augmented agent. His enhancements are more obvious and crude than ours. I will take my rusty metal bones and sweep away into the junk pile. Gunter began his career almost three decades ago, serving in the German GSG-9 counter-terrorist unit. These days, the mech is one of the coalition's most lethal tools. He doesn't like the newer models. You don't shoot. I surrender. So you think you know better than FEMA what to do with this month's Ambrosia shipment? You're too late. It's on its way back to the people. Arresting the NSF leader concludes the mission. For a hundred years there's been a conspiracy of plutocrats against ordinary people. Do you have a single fact to back that up? In 1945 corporations paid 50% of federal taxes. Now they pay about 5%. Who wants their surplus, he ate? The NSF we face is the second or the third reincarnation of the organization. I wonder, how's a guy with a tattooed forehead get to be an NSF colonel? Every new version seems to be more anti-authoritarian than the previous. His ideology appears to be a combination of right and left-wing talking points with a good dose of boomer conspiracy theories from the 80s. The chief finally let us loose. We were right behind you and cut through them like a hot knife through butter. For our first job, we did okay. I was in your class at the academy. You probably don't remember. Paul meets us back at the UNATCO HQ. Their leader might have surrendered, but the NSF won this round. They stole a month's supply of the vaccine and took it to New York. It's good to finally see some action. Just keep a level head. You're doing well so far. Paul hates it when we use lethal force, prefers alternative methods. Knockout gas, riot prods, stun batons. It's my first day too, I'm pretty excited. The HQ is in the bunker underneath Liberty Island, one of the game's social areas. The retinal scanner can read blood vessel patterns right through your sunglasses. Plenty of people to talk to with many little secrets and side activities. We have an office here with a desk, a computer, an email account, all that. Hmm, I'd rather not not waste a lockpick. We should go see the boss. Reporting for duty, sir. The man himself. Splendid. Do you accept my apologies about the situation, Topside? A refreshing change from the Academy, sir. Don't despise training, my boy. Even you would be worthless without the shaping touch of drills and studies. Are you sure you pressed the right button? I do not make mistakes of that kind. Your hand might have slipped. No, I wanted orange. It gave me lemon lime. The machine would not make a mistake. It's the maintenance man. He knows I like orange. The woman Gunter is talking to is Anna Navarra, a Russo-Israeli mechanized agent working for UNATCO, our new partner. Believe it or not, the lemon lime plotline won't be resolved until the sequel. My new partner, J.C. Denton. Don't tell me you're going to wear those sunglasses during a night operation. 
My vision is augmented. Better to look good than to have the distractions of another agent who needs backup. He doesn't wear glasses to look good, Gunter. He wears them to obfuscate the creepy-looking Fremen eyes JC and Paul have. It's nanotech, you won't understand. The machine people have a certain sense of solidarity with one another. Anna is the opposite of Paul. She loves killing people. And the more people you kill, the more she will like you. <laughs> That's the medical bay. We're in for a checkup. The medbots will heal your wounds for free, no strings attached. They're also used to install non augmentations from the canisters we find in the game world. Every new canister will offer you a choice of two mutually exclusive cyberpunk superpowers. Do we want to hit harder with melee weapons or do we want to lift heavier things? I pick the lifting ability because it's more useful for exploration. You look like the real thing. They actually let you operate on people? They actually let you point a gun at people. Jaime Reyes is the chief physician in charge of the medical bay. Seems like a nice enough guy. We'll get more familiar with him as the game progresses. In the back of the mad bay there is this area. A one-way glass. Access is restricted. Interesting. You're getting warm. You're red hot. Looks like you found me. Alex Jacobson is the Unatco communications tech, a hacker and field advisor to the augmented agents during combat operations. That's General Carter, the veteran of the Second Civil War. That was more than two decades ago. I'm not a general anymore. Just call me Carter. In between missions, he gives us various items from the armory. We usually get a choice of what to take. See Manderley on level two and let's move out. Unatco HQ is built like an XCOM base, right next to the armory. There are holding cells. Nothing to see here yet. Uh, we have a problem. Manderly is supposed to trigger a cutscene, but nothing is happening because he is stuck in the door and the game cannot progress. I exit and re-enter the level, hoping this would reset him, but that did nothing. What did work was manually holding the door the moment it closes. Manderly is now free. That will be JC's job. What's that? We are going to New York. The NSF took the stolen vaccine to a secure location with sophisticated defenses. The base is powered by a generator hidden somewhere in the city. Our job is to find and disable the generator while Paul leads the assault on the base itself. Here's your op bonus for the great job you did in the statue. We also get paid. Credits are the global currency, used in the US, China, France and probably everywhere. You'll come to admire your partner. She's one of our best. Well, I love her accent. All right, we have a mission to complete. Wish I was going with you. And this is how you spend your hard-earned credits. Occasionally, you'll meet various characters offering to sell you something. You'll find merchants in the unlikeliest of places. The first merchant in the game was actually an NSF deserter back in Philbins. Let's head back to the docks. The boat will take us to New York. Let's head out. Somebody kill me! Anybody? Before we get to our main objective, the NSF generator, we need to locate one of the stolen barrels of Ambrosia that is supposedly hidden inside Castle Clinton in Battery Park. The NSF enjoys plenty of support in New York, and the castle is their logistics base of sorts. I will give you a schematic of the barrel, but first we will exterminate the NSF terrorists. Exterminate? A precious opportunity we cannot neglect. Anna being her usual self. Our country is the sweet land of liberty of the icing. The park has many civilians and non-combatants. The NSF terrorists in the subway have threatened to blow up the platform. Watch for booby traps. This pig. Here is a thing. NSF is a popular political movement, but uh, they use a plurality of tactics. It's not wrong to call them terrorists. Battery Park Metro Station is booby-trapped with explosives, tons of armed men inside who will shoot on sight, and they have hostages. Almost every place in Deus Ex has some sort of a back entrance, including the Metro. This allows us to bypass the laser tripwires. Using a slow-acting non-lethal weapons in this situation is simply irresponsible. Most of those old forts have a bolt hole. 
Those boys will be long gone out of side tunnel by now. Some NPCs will drop cryptic hints that there is some sort of alternative way of getting into the castle. It's right here, in fact, next to the boat that brought us to New York. It appears to be locked, though. Well, let me get my lockpick. The NSF inside the castle don't appear to be a threat to the local civilians, so I'm back to non-lethal methods. A control room and a nano-augmentation canister, a precious find. Disabling the cameras would make exploring this place much easier. And this is the reason we're here. Objective complete. Agent Navarre will describe your next assignment. You might be wondering why Ambrosia looks like this. See, the Grey Death is not a real virus. It was created with nanotechnology. And Ambrosia is not a real vaccine. It's a bunch of nanomachines that are designed to counteract the Grey Death nanomachines. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims, pride from every mountainside, let freedom ring. We finish mopping up the castle via non-lethal means, but I'm concerned Anna might have murdered some of them while I wasn't looking. You were too gentle with the NSF, but I cannot complain. You completed the objective. That's right. At least you are not a coward like Paul. You Max might have copper wiring to reroute your fear of pain, but I've got nerves of steel. You are not a mech. You do not know what it is like. What's it like to stand around revving your actuators while the more advanced units complete the mission? Holy crap, JC, that was cold. Unlike Gunter, Anna doesn't have an inferiority complex. For her, it's all about skill. It's about the art of murderizing terrorists. Augments don't make an agent, she says. You better get to Hell's Kitchen. The fighting's pretty rough up there. We have to go on with the mission. Sounds like there is a problem with an assault team. Your brother Paul has gotten our troops into another mess. We get to Hell's Kitchen via the now terrorist-free metro. My native gun. Country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. Talk to one of the guys in green. You natos running the show today. Our first of many visits to this neighborhood of Manhattan. What's the situation here? You're taking over. I've got to get my team ready to raid the warehouse. We're looking for an industrial-sized generator in a large building. There is still a heavy NSF presence on the streets. Mass combat sure looks weird in this game. The NPCs would randomly crouch while firing or strafe erratically like old Quake bots. Kind of reminds me of the Battle of Bruma. I suppose these evasive maneuvers really do make the NPCs harder to hit, but that is at the cost of them looking really stupid, which conflicts with the game's more serious themes. Den. Hey, it's Den. You want these? What? Give him the grenades. Look, I know he's your brother, but... The troopers are annoyed that Paul issued them non-lethal weapons. Whatever, we'll take these off their hands. Gas grenades are very useful. Do something, man. They're gonna kill him. Nothing. I checked his pockets. <clears throat> Don't live underground and not have one of Charlie's cards. Make him take off his shoes. I just sleep down there. They don't give you money unless you're on the council. Take off your shoes. The NSF welcomes everyone oppressed by the current political and economic system. Right-wingers, left-wingers, hackers, terrorists, gangsters, street thugs. The man is a member of a community of bums who call themselves the Mole People. We'll learn more about them later. Underworld. And where does this lead? Watch it, JC. Our agents report that this area is booby-trapped. The hideout of an elusive character who calls himself Smuggler. Just Smuggler. People I know, they've been disappearing. Some sort of a paramilitary group kidnapped his friend. They're keeping him in the sewers. Sure, we'll help rescue him. Smuggler promised a discount. I have my discount right here. He hides a number of expensive items behind the glass. Ton Hotel. Oh, so that's why it's called Ton. I played this game half a dozen times and never noticed this before. What's your business here, Agent? Just going up to my brother's room. Uh, you better hold off. The NSF retreated in there about half an hour ago, and they've taken hostages. We're waiting on a specialist. I'm your specialist. Like JC said, our brother has a permanent room at the town with a bunch of useful items inside. The hotel owner is at the desk as if nothing is happening. At this point, everyone got used to terrorism. Hot as hell in these masks. I take out the NSF using normal, non-paralyzing darts. That's Paul's room. The keypad is behind the painting. What's the code? Oh yeah. Thinking about setting a thing like that in my apartment. Extra lockpicks and multi-tools are always good. The owner is worried about his daughter Sandra. 
She can come home, no questions, no speeches. Funny that the last name of the guy who rents out rooms is Renton. You said I didn't have to. Make Janie do it. I already took the money. And when it's JoJo and it's something he wants, you gotta do it. And that's Sandra and her friend. You've got 10 seconds to beat it before I add you to the list of NSF casualties. Easy, bro. Just having us a conversation. Five seconds. Girl's got a head full of marbles. I have to yell. Oh, she don't hear me. Three. She skitters on me. It's my ass, man. One. All right. Some of the best writing in this game is when JC threatens or insults people. Let's check out the sewer and maybe do the smuggler's task. And who would that be? One of the government goons we've been warned about? The environmental storytelling says they're not buddies with the NSF. These tunnels aren't on the New York City sewer maps. Weird. I have no information on what you might be getting into. It seems worth following up. Yes, Alex, I agree. The paramilitary set up a base in the old water treatment facility. They have tons of these poison gas barrels. I move them around using the strength augment and then use the poison gas against the goons. It works, but uh, with one unintended consequence. This is when it dawned on me that the chemist we accidentally killed was Ford Schick, smuggler's friend we came here to rescue. Uh-oh. Yes. Password? Bloodshot. This is the first time I'm failing this quest. Smuggler will not be pleased. I wish I'd never said anything. Maybe he'd be alive right now. Yeah, maybe. But probably not. One of the emails on the computer down in the sewers indicated that they would execute the chemist once he is no longer necessary. But necessary for what? What were they doing there? Were they trying to poison the water or something? It's a mystery. The free clinic. Let's take a look inside. I was there when the NSF overran Squall Nomi, back when they were called the Northwest Secessionist Forces. They came in with their mop to camel and we never picked them up on any of the censors. He's talking about the Second Civil War. Many people took shelter in the clinic because of all the fighting outside. Some of them have the Grey Death. The doctor tries to sell us an automated healthcare plan, which is basically a privilege of using their medbots. We seize the means of healthcare via a gap gun. We are offered a choice between the ability to breathe underwater or have increased resistance to radiation and toxins. I pick Red resistance. This is not a passive ability, unfortunately. In fact, all orgs in Deus Ex 1 need to be manually activated and they consume energy. Christ. You see the guy begging for a cure? Yeah, what about him? It won't help. There is no cure. Let it spill over to the schools and churches that the bodies pile up in the streets. In the end, they'll beg us to save them. There is this silly contradiction in video game cyberpunk. Any visual media cyberpunk, really. It's supposed to explore the dystopian implications of advanced technology disrupting social order, but the conversation doesn't go anywhere because cyberpunk looks very cool. These dudes are cool. Hell yeah! Deus Ex, admittedly, doesn't have the beautiful misery problem, since most of it takes place in environments that look less hospitable than the Perestroika era Kami block apartments. Wanted to get back and try it out in the sculpture. Christ, you and the sculptures. What's this one called? The Man Who Was Thursday. Makes as much sense as the last one. What was it called? Napoleon something or other? Napoleon of Notting Hill. Doesn't seem much use for sculpture today. There's always tomorrow. The Underworld Tavern. Paul mentioned this place. Your brother's one of the bravest men I know. The music. Among other things, Deus Ex is fondly remembered for its soundtrack, a mixture of jazz, techno and ambient. Very 90s. Most of it was composed by Alexander Brandon, who also wrote music for Unreal and Unreal Tournament. I am Brosia from a drug dealer. We're talking about your wife, the Grey Death. I don't know. If I gave it to her, and it was cut... JoJo's good for it. People know him. He'd be hanging from a streetlight if he was selling bad vaccine.
So the NSF are distributing the vaccine via street-level drug dealers. The barkeep has visible metal augmentations, similar to what Anna Navarre has. The woman is ex unetco but not nostalgic for her time in the organization. I can still polish a glass, she says. The underworld tavern is where we meet Jock for the first time. The conversation is very... Dell's Axion, Jock keeps foreshadowing and essentially spoiling the main plot of the game, while JC, who thinks all of this is crackpot nonsense, repeatedly keeps trying to change the subject. Well, I'm about to go on duty. What kind of chopper pilot starts work at midnight? He flies a black chopper. Formerly, he works for the NSA, but the division services many government and UN-operated agencies. He tells us about Area 51. The place no longer appears to be government-owned. Strange people have been visiting. Billionaires, big executives. It is as if Area 51 was taken over by a private entity. Not likely. Something is going on underground. A lot of rock comes out of there. And they keep laying more fiber optic cables, he says. This is actually an important plot point that I don't think ever gets coherently explained in game. Jock doesn't know this, but what he is talking about is called Aquinas Hub. Some years ago, billionaire and inventor Bob Page presented the world something called Aquinas Protocol, a new way of hosting information on the web, Internet 2.0, a useful invention in the world succumbing to social dysfunction and authoritarianism. But believe it or not, there was a catch. The new protocol allowed for greater centralization and surveillance. This appears to have been Paige's goal all along. I'm gonna do it. I'm glad. I hope she does better. Can't be any worse for her than morphine. Hey, it's Shay. One for the road. Oh, hey, it's Sandra Renton. Your father misses you. I don't need you or anybody telling me what to do. Okay, I'm sorry. How does it feel to be ordered to murder civilians just because they support the fastest growing political movement in this nation's history? Joe Green is a journalist with an uh, unclear ideological stance. JC wants to interrogate Green about a possible location of the power generator. But since the journalist is more experienced at this kind of thing, he ends up interrogating JC and and getting way more information than we care to disclose. Don't worry, I'll say sources within you, Nadko, if I quote you. This lady is JoJo's ex. Oh yeah, she will talk shit. Says the man is a fraud. His body mods are cosmetic. He intentionally cuts his face with a razor to look badass. She points us to the warehouse district. Listen to your brother, JC. Respect his experience. Let's leave it at that. Heads up, JC. We've got NSF troops on the rooftops. Yeah, we do. Some of them armed with sniper rifles. These kill us in one shot if they manage to hit the head. This is a combat encounter area. We explore the urban labyrinth and kill or incapacitate the NSF soldiers. There are no non-combatants here, I don't think. Weapon accuracy in Deus Ex is based on your character's skill, not your skill as a player. As you can see, the rifle is almost unusable without the skill point investment, combining a realistic first-person perspective with abstract mechanics seems to be an unpopular idea. I notice that individuals in RPG community tend to either be neutral towards such systems, acknowledging that the devs use them for a purpose, or they tend to absolutely hate and despise them. It seems that almost nobody actually likes this kind of design. I suppose this is why it is now extinct. Look for the building with the antennas. You mean this one? There are only like four buildings here, Alex. Despite the attempts to de-emphasize player's skill, if you are decent at shooters, Deus Ex won't be that hard. Here is me knifing a bunch of NSF in open combat, even though JC is wounded, has no augmentations active, and has only rudimentary melee abilities. This must be the control room. There is probably a computer terminal that controls the generator. Yeah, here it is. Good job, JC. The power just died at the NSF headquarters. Now it's up to Paul. We should explore around before we leave, since it doesn't seem like we'll be coming back. Let's read the NSF emails. We need to impress upon those under our command that collateral damage in form of civilian casualties must be avoided at all possible costs. I guess they're talking about Battery Park. And then there is an email from someone called Jay Lebedev. He talks about moving something to an airfield. Interesting. It's a good practice to preserve lockpicks and gap rockets by using explosive barrels to force open doors. Grenade-like lambs also do this, but the supply of these is limited. How's the raid going? They should have sent Agent Navarre. 
Your brother is timid like a child. Paul doesn't seem to be the most popular person in UNATCO. Fast boarding call, UNATCO HQ. Oh hey, it's Jock, the guy from the bar. Black helicopters are a now forgotten boomer conspiracy theory from the 90s. The UN was supposedly preparing a fleet of those in order to facilitate the military occupation of the United States in the name of the New World Order. If you wanted to save people, you could have unloaded the whole shipment in Manhattan. Why the airlift? You said it yourself. Secrets are power. The prisoners on level 3 are a sensitive matter. Leave the interrogations to Mr. Simons. Oh, it's these guys. Previously, we've met agents with mechanical augmentations, as well as the ones with more advanced nano-augs. Serious P agents, more popularly known as Men in Black, are physiopharmaceutically augmented. A combination of psychological indoctrination with an unknown cocktail of powerful drugs. As a result, they possess superhuman abilities while maintaining a human appearance, uh, more or less. Do not question the prison yourself. They have pale skin and a metallic voice. Don't worry about what the guys are saying about Hell's Kitchen. What is it they're saying? I know for a fact from when you were at the Academy that you can do more than throw gas grenades and use a prod. Dude, I killed a lot of people today and I'm not super proud of that fact. I was here first. Mr. Mandeley is in a meeting, JC. You'll have to wait. Can somebody tell me what happened to Paul's team? Just fire the arrogant son of a bitch. I wasn't exaggerating. He's our best agent. We don't need him. We've got his brother, and more on the way. He knows nothing. I think he does. You should never have sent him to Hong Kong. Who is he speaking with? They're obviously talking about our brother. I cannot wait forever. He will see you when he's ready. We know that the mystery man is a villain. We've seen him in the intro cutscene. He seems to outrank Manderly. I am next. We get paid. That's the second paycheck tonight. I'm just going to say it straight, JC. Your brother screwed up. We got nothing. And he's taking the heat this time. The coalition is letting him go. What do you mean, letting go? Paul is an experimental piece of technology. How can you let him go? We'll be flying back to New York. Remember the email we read that said something about an airfield? It seems the NSF plan is to airlift the stolen Ambrosia barrels, but we're not sure where to or where from. And stay away from the press this time, especially the tabloids. Do I need to quote the manual? Secrets are lives. All right, you got us there. I have been waiting for 20 minutes. Sorry, Anna. What is it? His enthusiasm in Battery Park was exceptional. The courtyard of Castle Clinton was a graveyard. That's actually not true. You've seen it yourself. Castle Clinton was taken via non-lethal means. It seems Anna is bugged. <laughs> Fucking mech brains. Nice, a free weapon mod. Those jerks from Washington think they own the place. So that man in Manderley's office, was he a Washington bureaucrat? He just gives off a very different vibe. I had to hack our own computer because I forgot the password. There is a cryptic message from Paul saying he has good reasons to behave the way he does. Welcome aboard, Agent. I'm Shannon. Hi, Shannon. You certainly made an impression on the troops tonight. Getting mixed reactions, Doc. Let's check out the cell block. One must admire a man who can keep a secret because he has value. What you know more than others makes money and gives you a measure of power. You Walton Simons. You think I could be bribed? This visit to HQ serves as an extended introduction to Walton Simons, one of the game's key characters. Simons is the director of FEMA. In real life, the Federal Emergency Management Agency used to be a focus of a number of conspiracy theories, and in the universe of Deus Ex, all of them are true. But FEMA is an American entity concerned with disaster relief. It is established that in this fictional world, the UN has a form of sovereignty sovereignty over the United States. So, how come a FEMA official outranks a leader of a UN anti-terrorist organization? Alex is not at his desk. He doesn't seem to have a conventional screen. Carter is glad to see us and he offers a bunch of items from the armory. But then, completely unprompted, JC begins to brag about his kill count. This disappoints the quartermaster who quickly reconsiders giving away extra items. UNATCO is a peacekeeping organization, he says. We are citizens first, soldiers second. I am a patient man. Ask me if I care. 
but not that patient. You saw nothing, didn't? Report to the helipad. Oh yeah, I'm not sure what Paul is up to, but I trust his judgment. Let's go. Since Jock knows Paul, I feel he's one of the very few people we can trust. Why the name Mole People? They call us that because we live underground. <laughs> like they're some kind of superior beings or something because they got more money than we do. We're dropping you in Battery Park. We know the NSF were moving material through here at one point. Seems like a good place to start looking. It is. This used to be an NSF logistics base after all. We made a sweep of the area. No sign of the NSF. The access to Castle Clinton is blocked. Battery Park is mostly populated by cops and UNATCO soldiers. We lost the battle today. I admit it. Yes, Lord. This old man actually used to command an entire division of NSF troops back during the Second Civil War. He's a merchant, actually. The game has the weirdest merchants. Hey, you a cop? The terrorist got away. I never thought about it, but I guess we are kind of like a cop. This guy is one of the mole people, a community of bums who live in abandoned tunnels beneath New York. We saved one of them from the NSF earlier tonight. This is how we know the password. Underworld. The tunnels are accessed through the same metro station we cleared the terrorists from. And here is our spy friend Harley Philbin, who did us a favor back at the statue. It wasn't a favor. I was well paid. I have to say, the mole people have the most elaborate elevator mechanism I've seen in my life. Welcome to Brooklyn Bridge Station. After the quakes, the homeless drifted down here. Junkies, runaways, grifters. There's a DSS file a mile long on this place. Some of them, the so-called mole people, have permanent living quarters in an adjacent tunnel system not on my map. In exchange for some drugs, a local junkie enthusiastically tells us everything he knows about the area, which is basically nothing. I'm looking for the mole people. Mole people? I've started the mole people, says the bum, and then they made committees that throw people out. I'm a classic example of the individualist. I do better on my own. This guy sounds like he might have a nuanced opinion about age of consent laws. The local drug dealer has some interest in augmentations, as well as a visor from Kotor 1. Bitch, I ain't going back to jail. <laughs> Honestly, after being exposed to the reality of the UNATCO prison system, I kind of understand this reaction. This part of the station is occupied by Latin American Mafia. We're gonna be special forces for the NSF. If they give us some cheats. Yeah, we've seen this. The NSF are recruiting gangs. Although special forces might be a euphemism for a meat shield. You are business talk to El Rey. El Rey is the subway kingpin. He can hook us up with some explosives. Serious stuff, he says. Comes from a guy in UNATCO. We can pay or we can get some of it for free if we kill the drug dealer. Already dead. A junkie in the man's restroom gives us another lamb grenade in exchange for drugs. Make it last. I killed homeboy out by the tracks. One of the subsequent levels has many robotic enemies, so the game needs to make sure we have explosives. Although, strictly speaking, they are not necessary. Looking good, JC. Most Brooklyn Bridge residents know that the keypad that unlocks the path to the mole people is located below the sink in the station's male restroom. The only thing about staying up here is the rooks. One time I was drunk and fell asleep and they put me on the train tracks. Good thing the five is shut down. The NSF are co-inhabiting the same living spaces as the moles, so when the shooting starts we need to be careful not to hit random civilians. They're eating cats? That's gross. The quickest way to put an end to the violence is to go straight for the NSF commander, who immediately surrenders. Hey, I'm just an accountant. I know the body armor looks threatening, but I'm part-time, like a reservist. The surviving terrorists Don't will sit. follow the commander's example and put down their arms. The key to the men's restroom is on the table. Restroom? I'm looking for an airfield. Yeah, what's up with this place and toilet-based logistics? Well, the NSF don't hurt anybody. The mole people are an impressively and realistically diverse faction when it comes to politics. They think because they have guns we're afraid, but we're not. Take three random mole people and you'll get five conflicting opinions on anything. They really think you'll make it this far? Paul said not to take any chances. What? I guess... 
It is possible that there is more than one pole in New York. You want this stinking rat hole? You got it. Deeper into the tunnels we go. Sooner or later, they're just gonna find us. This jumping puzzle feels like it was ripped straight from Half-Life 1. The Gap Gun is an excellent lockpick, but did you know it can be used as a weapon as well? Even without any skill point investment whatsoever, this thing is brutally effective against bots of all kinds. You're entering a hella-based terminal below a private section of LaGuardia. Wait, LaGuardia is a real place, isn't it? Then why isn't it crawling with UNATCO troops? Seems obvious the missing barrels should be here. Does the government even control New York? Unlike in Fallout, in Del Sex you can't loot dismembered bodies. We missed out on some sniper rifle ammo. This is the terminal at LaGuardia owned by Juan Ivanovich Lebedev. We read an email from Lebedev to the NSF commander back in Hell's Kitchen. Your orders are to locate and kill him. We're sending you a map of the airfield. The place is patrolled by commercial grade security bots. This is why the game wanted us to have all these lambs. You can also get rid of the bots by taking advantage of these fuel barrels found all over the area. LaGuardia is basically one huge combat slash stealth section, but there are still places to explore and secrets to find. Great. That should make sure you and I won't miss any shots. I've notified the recovery team. One barrel left. We think this one may actually be on Lebedev's jet. We know where that is. Wait. Who is that? Oh shit, there is only one pole in New York. You can relax, JC. I told the troops to stand down. That's right. I'm working for the NSF. I'll meet you at the 747. Listen to what I've got to say. We don't have much time. Paul tells us that the Grey Death is a man-made virus. JC, the character, has no way of knowing if that is true. But we, the player, had a reason to suspect this might have been the case, because we watched the intro cutscene with two powerful sociopaths explaining their plans. The UN's about the only chance we've got these days, if the US spirals into another civil war. A pretext, nothing more. The whole project of world government, going back to the League of Nations, has been funded and manipulated mainly by wealthy bankers. The UN being the vehicle of world government is another classic boomer conspiracy theory. Most conspiracies are true in Deus Ex. We know that the UN does have sovereignty over America. The UN was founded not to end war, but to gradually dissolve national governments and replace them with a globalist meritocracy. Dude, that actually sounds kind of not terrible, maybe. The mechanic thinks there is a drug deal that's about to happen. Well, he's right in a way. He offers to sell us equipment he stole from someone's locker. The brother makes some sense, doesn't he? Yeah, but he kind of lost me when he started talking about the globalists. Hope you decide to join up. The interior of the 747 uses a bunch of unique models and textures you won't see anywhere else in the game. This machine should be ancient by airplane standards. That's three out of three lost barrels. Assuming we won't defect immediately, we better get well compensated for this. The repair bots function much like med bots, but for your bioelectric energy. As long as one of these is around, we'll never run out of mana. We'll find out what this canister does later. That would be Juan Lebedev, a Latino-Russian magnate and a major financial backer of the NSF. I surrender. What? Easy now, agent. UNATCO has a policy against killing unarmed prisoners. We have much to learn from each other. Lebedev's backstory gets fleshed out in Deus Ex fiction novels. I haven't read those. Steps behind us. Good work. Now finish the job. He surrendered. He's an unarmed prisoner. UNATCO policy protects him. Terminate the prisoner, agent. There are several ways to proceed. We can kill Juan. Manderly will be happy. We can kill Anna. She is tough but not invulnerable. JC is being constantly monitored from UNATCO HQ. But it just so happens that Alex is fully aware that Anna is a psychopath. And if it comes to that, he'll cover our rear end by deleting the records. I have the command here now. Comedy option. Kill both Lebedev and Navarra. This is actually a likely outcome. Mechs self-destruct when they die, resulting resulting in a violent explosion. The fourth option is to do nothing. After all, he did surrender. I can tell by the expression on your friend's face that she knows where I'm heading. Yonatko is completely correct to think that Tracer Tong will soon understand Ambrosia. Why tell me all this? I've said nothing that Yonatko won't find on this plane's computer. But here's the secret. This is what Paul was so interested to hear from Tracer Tong. 
Manderly will be disappointed in your insubordination. Anna prevents him from finishing the sentence. I have never had this much difficulty with a trainee in my life. Paul managed to escape. Good. Agent Herman is on his way. Having sacrificed social acceptance for enhanced performance, Gunter is what they call an ogre, classified by the UN as a lethal weapon rather than a person. Don't you think we should give Paul a chance to explain himself? He's been with UNATCO for years. Only one thing can happen when you break your oath to the Coalition. But the metal parts are impossible to maintain without specialist care, and they give him a shelf date of sorts. Eventually he'll be obsolete. I will be truthful. I have requested the assignment of the Paul Denton assassination. This makes Gunter resent more advanced nano-augmented agents. This is gonna shake up the Coalition, JC. I don't know if you realized how important your brother was. The Coalition will recover. I'm not so worried about the Coalition. Let's go back to HQ and get yelled at by Manderley. The only way to allay their suspicions of you, JC, is to actively work against your brother's allies. UNATCO. Prisoner executions, corruption, and a rogues gallery of psycho robot people. The troopers are on edge. The game made us think this will be our home. Now I'm not so sure. I can't believe it, JC. What got into Paul? I guess he got a better offer. Let's get this over with. All right, Denton. What the hell happened? You were under direct orders. Your orders contradicted the UNATCO code of conduct. In a great bit of dialogue, JC bullies Manderley into giving him the paycheck for recovering the barrels. Coalition has shut down Paul's augmentations and has activated the kill switch. The kill switch is a mechanism integrated into augmented individuals that allows for their remote termination, like to prevent capture or to get rid of a traitor. Different types of augmented entities have different kinds of kill switches. In nano-augmented agents, like JC and Paul, it causes the nanites to multiply exponentially, killing the host in about 24 hours. Paul will die in 24 hours. Manderly sends us to Hong Kong to kill an associate of our brothers, a man called Tracer Tong. I got you this opportunity. Now it's up to you. Yeah, thanks. I guess I can spare a lockpick. The director of FEMA, Walton Simons, also has advanced nano-augmentations. JC is confused why would Simons even need physical augments. But you're the director. You work behind a desk. Am I behind a desk right now? I like how JC didn't even bother waiting for Simons to leave the room before discussing mutinous conspiracy theories with Jaime. Weren't you scared? A little, but when I'm wearing this helmet, I've learned to set aside the instincts of a civilian and be completely professional. There are only a handful of people here we can trust. Alex is definitely one of them. So is Jaime, probably Carter, definitely Jock. The canister we picked in the 747 offers a choice between an EMP and a ballistic shield. Sounds like a no-brainer. EMP damage is uncommon, bullets are goddamn everywhere. Carter approves of our decision of not killing Lebedev and offers a choice of equipment, including a clip of GEP rockets. It's a question of who benefits society more. But who decides that? You? The troopers are debating ethics. Listening to them is a little surreal because they're both voiced by the same actor. We'll miss you, Agent. We are not going to Hong Kong. Paul is in his apartment in Manhattan. Stupid. That's the worst possible place to hide. Back to New York. Your brother's hurt pretty bad. You'll find him at the apartment. If he can walk, get him to come with you. And what if he can't walk? The streets are empty. There is an occasional riot cop here and there. It's already too late for you. The free clinic is inaccessible. The underworld bar is still open. Oh, it's that asshole journalist. What I want to know is how my boss found out that I talked to you. You're the investigator. You tell me. I think one of us told him. And that's the informant Harley Philbin. Some thugs taken over the town. Someone should take care of him. Everyone is pointing us towards Tan. He's not my boyfriend. And what is he? He's Jojo God. Jojo the punk, the NSF colonel in charge of vaccine distribution, is staying right here at the hotel. The owner asks us to issue him a handgun. I don't have one to spare, and it's probably a bad idea to arm a civilian. However, in the story script, giving the man a handgun is actually the only way of making his daughter Sandra respect him, which supposedly would be a good ending to their story arc. And if he dies in the confrontation with Jojo, this will trigger the much-memed what a shame 
dialogue. Oh my god, Daddy! What a shame. He can't really be... There must be something we can do. He was a good man. What a rotten way to die. Oh, you bad! I'm chaotic good. I'm leaving. I'm getting on a bus and going west until I run out of money or get to the ocean, whichever comes first. Let's check on Smuggler. Yes. Password, Bloodshot. I see you stopped crying like a baby. Hey, about your brother. If he's in Hell's Kitchen, he's a sitting duck. How the hell do you even know about Paul and his connection to the NSF? He finally allows us to access his store. We don't have to rob him to get the goodies. But I mean, I'm still gonna do it. Alright, let's go to Paul's. Is this kill switch real? What's it going to do to you? I'm afraid that's, uh, classified. Very funny. He's basically dying of a very fast-acting cancer. And he needs our help with something else. UNATCO tracked Lebedev to other NSF bases and allied terrorist groups like the French Silhouette. Paul needs us to send a distress signal to warn them. The signal needs to be sent from the NSF base accessible via previously blocked tunnel here in Hell's Kitchen. Some of us will be heroes. The rest of us will walk away on both legs. The installation is crawling with coalition troops. I suppose this explains why Paul chose to remain in Manhattan. He wanted to send the signal himself, but the kill switch prevented this from happening. In the control room, we stumble upon two UNATCO troopers erasing sensitive information from the NSF server. The uniforms. If it wasn't for Simons, we'd still be wearing those little white helmets. Yeah. He's what they call a philanthropist. Axe this file? Yeah, all of it. The whole directory. What I want to know is what he gets in return. Don't you know what a philanthropist is? Yeah, like Nietzsche. No, a philanthropist. Giving to charity. Oh. Well, that's why he volunteered for FEMA. To help out after hurricanes and that kind of thing. That's a lot of money to just give away. Some people are just good, you know. Good to the bone. Speaking of bones, I attempt to get rid of the old security system by using one of the explosive crates scattered across the level. But I fuck up and end up with both my legs broken. No, I absolutely won't use any one of the dozen or so medkits I've collected. I might need them later. It's just me, JC, crawling in the direction of a mad bot. This sort of damage modeling is absent from the subsequent games. You might have noticed that a surprising number of problems in death sex are solved by a liberal application of explosives. Howdy, Agent. Guess you have the command now. Correct. You are dismissed, soldier. JC the character is about to make the most important choice of his career. As a player, we have to support the NSF, even though in Dao Sex there are many different ways of reaching your destination inside the constraints of the narrative, the story is ultimately linear. Denton, Walton Simons here. What an expensive mistake you turned out to be. I am with the troops to kill you because, frankly, I don't have the patience to wait for one of those damn kill switches to work. We have 24 hours. I can't bring myself to use lethal force on our former colleagues. The streets are quiet, but that's not gonna last. No escape. We lock the door behind us. I have a question about Simons. Why does FEMA have authority over UNATCO? I thought FEMA was a domestic agency for flood relief and that sort of thing. His authority doesn't come from FEMA. He's part of a secret organization, Majestic 12. Majestic 12. This is the first time we learn the true name of the enemy. Agent J.C. Denton, please put down your weapons and step into the hallway. Paul can't walk. It seems his arrest is inevitable. Until now, Paul was the agent of the story. He issued us the main quest, so to speak. So when he gives us the password for the metro station and says we should go on without him, it seems the main quest wants us to do that. But this is a fake out. The streets are crawling with UNATCO goons and robots. After we get to Battery Park, we meet Agent Herman, who is invulnerable and has a plasma rifle. The promised extraction never arrives. Paul gets killed by MIBs. The story continues without him. The correct thing to do is to ignore Paul's instructions and protests and help him fight off the incoming attack. You'll need some heavy firepower, but it's not super hard since you're basically defending a choke point. The hallway is infested with UNATCO soldiers. This is one of them supposed to lose scenarios. No matter what path you pick, once JC falls, he gets taken to the unknown location. I came to watch you die. You're early. I've got at least 20 hours left. Whatever this place is, she seems to be at home here. 
Is this one of them secret FEMA camps? When I played this game for the first time as a kid, this was the exact moment I got Deus Ex. I need you to escape. I can cut power to the door only a few seconds without being detected. Get ready. All the characters, all the plot lines, all the setting details combined into one coherent picture. I was hooked. Transmitting the floor plan. All of your equipment has been stored in the armory to the south. Here. Paul Denton is alive in the laboratory to the north, but has a damaged info link. And that's right here. You must inform him of the escape. Tracer Tong will require his data vault in order to defeat the kill switch. They took our material possessions, but they couldn't take away our skills. This is the maintenance facility for the security bots. The armory is to the south. Not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but um, who is Daedalus? You're Denton. I thought you were dead. I'm sure there is a robot here we can reprogram and take over. We've seen these black uniforms before. Yeah, we're going the right way. Okay, let's do the paperwork on this one. When you are killed by an NPC, they would sometimes bark a dialogue line commenting on your defeat. The MJ-12 paramilitaries are very professional, while the NSF soldiers would sometimes express surprise that they actually managed to kill you. These are Page Industries Delta II Peace Bringers, the most heavily armed bots in the game, seemingly inspired by ED-209 from Robocop. That's where they keep all our confiscated stuff. Getting rid of all the MJ-12 crap I picked up along the way. Yeah, come to me, baby. Playing some inventory Tetris. No Dow sex level can be considered authentic without a corrupt local trying to sell us items they stole. You are beneath the nanotech lab. The facility also hosts several research labs. In three years, I haven't figured out who I'm working for. The scientists seem to be working here against their will. That's a pharmaceutically augmented agent. I'll tell you what's worse. The rapture chickens from Hong Kong. I've never seen a more perfect example of Gon's- Live and learn. Man in black explode on death. Just what kind of pharmacology are they taking? What's your stack, dude? And what was that about raptor chickens? Disabling a MIB with a riot prod doesn't seem to cause the explosive reaction. This is a report on Walton Simon's augmentations. An active defense system, a cloaking device, ballistic plates, optical enhancement. We can and will get all of these. Starting with active defense system that detonates explosives at a distance. This is extremely useful since some of the common enemies in the late game use explosive projectiles as their main attack. Is he armed? It's Denton. We aren't taking any chances. <gasps> I hope nobody gets hurt. We've got him penned in. He won't get far. What about this area? Is it safe? Long as I'm with you. Hey, find somewhere else to hide. <laughs> These are called Karkians. They are laboratory-designed creatures resembling a chimera of a crocodile and a bear. We hack the security system in the next room to make the turret attack the Karkians, but it will take a while for them to go down. That's the lab where they keep Paul. Here he is. Oh my god, he escaped? I'm like the Russian researcher who contracted his own virus. They want to study the way I die. We don't need to escort him, Paul will escape on his own. We'll see him again, but essentially he stops playing a major role in the story from now on. Data vault image sent to Tracer Tong. Please leave the facility. At least one of you must survive. MJ-12 executed one of the scientists. I guess she went outside the allowed area. Let's get the hell out of here. Please exit to the helipad. Potential encounters include Jaime Reyes. Sam Carter, Alex Jacobson, Joseph Manderley, and Anna Navarra. Looking forward to meeting them. Yes, the entrance to the MJ-12 facility, to the FEMA camp or whatever that was, is right here in UNATCO HQ. That's Jaime. I forgot to give Manderley my resignation. This is an interesting choice. We can direct him to Hong Kong, which is our next destination, or tell him to stay right here at UNATCO as our hidden asset. Either option is good. Both lead to interesting results. You see this? The camera is not reacting to our presence. Means we have another ally. JC, I've been watching you through your info link. A harrowing escape. Alex has the key to the exit, but he is scared of Anna Navarra, who is also around. General Carter. We've been through that, soldier. Just Carter. I've discovered some things about Unatco. I'm unlocking the armory. I don't want to know where you're going. Just load up. 
Carter doesn't want to hear the details of what we uncovered. He understands UNATCO is corrupt, but still believes in the coalition. He makes an argument I heard some religious people make. Yes, the organization is flawed, but if everyone leaves, things will become even worse. Some say concentrated power leads to abuse, but I believe that if an institution has a solid foundation, it can survive the narrow aspirations of the people it employs. While we still do not know the identity of a person or persons calling themselves Daedalus, they have given us an ample reason to believe that he will be an asset to the cause of freedom. Signed in French. I take it this means Carter has been talking to Silhouette. It's important to hack this computer near a cell block, because it contains a part of Anna Navarra's kill phrase. Max also have kill switches, you see, but these work a little differently. You have to say a special phrase to them in order to trigger the self-destruct. You literally murder them with words. It seems the UNATCO personnel are not properly trained to operate doors. All the hours I spent dreaming about working here. All the heroic fantasies when really this place is just a cinder block bunker with a carpet. Oh, by the way, Shannon is a merchant who steals from UNATCO. <laughs> I wanted orange. It gave me lemon lime. JC? Manderley, it's JC. Manderley is talking to Simons via the Star Wars hologram thing. Look around. Your star pupil has come back to teach a lesson to his old instructor. JC. I never had time to take the oath of service to the Coalition. How about this one? I swear not to rest until UNATCO is free of you and the other crooked bureaucrats who've perverted its mission. I had struck a very careful balance between Washington and the public interest. Thank you for your service. His computer has the second half of Anna's skill phrase. Okay, let's face the music. I will have to kill you myself. Take your best shot, Flatlander woman. How did you know? To kill your enemy with a word. Such a cool way to end her character arc. The kill phrase, Flatlander Woman, is a reference to the novel Flatland by Edwin Abbott, about people living in a two-dimensional world in which women are just lines. They are invisible when seen edge-on and dangerous because they're very sharp. That's just what Wiki says, I haven't actually read the novel. I've sat here and watched her kill dozens of suspects. Now I'm not so worried about sticking out my neck to give you this key. I think you've already stuck out your neck, Daedalus. What are you talking about? So Daedalus is not Alex, it's not Paul, it's not anyone from Silhouette. If you were paying very close attention to what's happening on screen, you might have figured Daedalus out, but the clues are very easy to miss. This was our last visit to this place. Wait, where is it? I think it's in the sequel, but you play a different character in that game. I will follow you. Jock's helicopter is equipped with cutting-edge stealth technology, and it's also a jet. We'll be in Hong Kong in a few hours. I blew it, JC. I'm sorry. MJ-12 must want you bad. We are in China, but MJ-12 managed to remotely hack the helicopter navigation and force us to land on top of one of their skyscrapers. We can kill everyone on the roof by reprogramming a gun turret. Barracks will have to clean up ourselves. If it's really Denton, one of us is going to get a promotion. Let's uh, place a mine near the alarm button. Let's get out the gap gun. Just takes one lucky shot. Oh my god! That's way too much area of effect damage. But what if we use a gas grenade instead? Oh yeah, that's much better. A Chinese sword. Nice. It's overall superior to a knife, although it does take more inventory space. A sword can be used to break certain locks, helping preserve lockpicks and rockets. This deactivates the MJ-12 electronic warfare system. Back in business. Come on down and stay clear of the blast doors to the south. I'm gonna launch a missile. Fire in the hole! Uh, Jock, I think you're supposed to say this before you fire. I guess we'll have to take some EMP damage, uh, or not. Keep your wallet in your front pocket. Welcome to Hong Kong, the game's biggest social area. Plenty of side content and fantastic music. Okay, you need to find Tracer Tong. He used to drop Paul off at a small compound east of the market. You could start there. 
Don't lose any time. Your kill switch is 12 hours old. If you die, our plans will fail. Locate Tracer Tom. When I played the game for the first time as a kid, realizing just how much to do there is in Hong Kong was like getting a surprise gift. Hand penned in China. Very authentic. Large unbuttoned coat pockets. Not advisable. Many fine restaurants buy the meats from me. By this point, I got used to the characters. I didn't want for the story to end, and for a while it seemed like it might. Many plot arcs were resolved. Manderly, Anna, Paul, Jojo, the Rentons, Smuggler. All that's left was for the surviving good guys to unite in the same place and launch an attack on Walton Simons and his henchman, the evil robot Gunter. But actually, we are only halfway through the game. My brother's name is Paul Denton. I heard that he was a frequent visitor to this compound. Do you know him? The Rumonos path is close to Guaylos. Paul is no friend of the West. Gordon is a Chinese criminal and the boss of the Luminous Path Triad, rivals of the Red Arrow Triad. There is a war brewing. The Red Arrow supposedly developed an advanced sword called the Dragon's Tooth, but their leader was murdered. Maggie Chow, a star of many kung fu movies and a person of influence, blamed his death on the Luminous Path. We need to go speak to Chow to sort things out. A Buddhist temple. Many other Buddhas in Hong Kong. Monks are very passive-aggressive. Representatives of both triads can be seen on the streets of Wan Chai Market, pressuring local businesses into paying them protection money. No injuries, only a prank. 100. I have 55. 100. 65. Okay, 65. Is there like an Unreal Engine aesthetics account? I have some amazing candidates. We have many prize Buddhas you will observe. Tonochi Road exists in real life, but the name is spelled a little differently. We had an agent in the building across the street, but he left for business in the United States. That sounds like a euphemism. The side streets are not safe for tourists at night. What's that behind you, dude? Oh, it's one of those Page Industries robots, but in Chinese colors. Maggie's apartment is on the top floor of this building. Welcome to Queen's Tower. The security system is maintained by a local Chinese company, which makes sense. I'm looking for Maggie Chow. You must be Mr. Denton. Like we established, UNAT cooperatives don't understand the concept of a door. This is the first time we're visiting an upper-class apartment in this game. Mother Chow, Mr. J.C. Denton. In the flesh. As dark and serious as his brother. You know who I am. And Paul? You know my brother? Intimately. Miss Chow says she's a friend of Paul's. Maggie's version of story is very different. Together with Paul, they were fighting against MJ-12 Asset, Luminous Path, she says. That doesn't sound very convincing, but then again, perhaps it's one of the game's subversions. We must expose the conspiracy behind the Luminous Path, then they will fall apart from the inside. We have many prize Buddhas you will observe. She sends us to the local police station to find dirt on the Luminous Path. That is a Buddha, but uh, I can't really tell a good Buddha from a bad Buddha. A characteristic noise of a sophisticated security system. The local computer terminal is connected to MJ12Net. Not exactly great OPSEC, Miss Chow. We've seen enough. Not advisable for tourists to visit the canals at night. Plenty of things to explore in the canals. This is a huge open area that is more or less optional as it contains almost nothing irrelevant to the main story. Hey, you! Who's that? You made a big mistake, homeboy. I don't care what anyone says, the game has the best voice acting. The big-ass Chinese ship is the home of a weapons merchant and her dog. Reflective surfaces, amazing Unreal One engine technology. We must be in the basement of a restaurant. Paul Denton, I have the blueprints. I must warn you, I... Oh. Warn me about what? I have made a mistake. The man who mistook us for Paul is a Versalife employee. That's the company that manufactures the Ambrosia vaccine. Paul hired this guy to spy for him, but they failed to uncover anything substantial. You know of a Maggie Chow? Maggie Chow, a bad character before she was an actress. Now she's everywhere in Hong Kong politics. What kind of accent is this? Miss Chow told us, you are the American who helped them steal the soul. 
Maggie Chow is spreading false rumors about Paul, trying to create conflict between him and the Luminous Path. We are in Wan Chai police station. I robbed the place off camera, but there is one keypad here that can only be opened with the access code Maggie gave us. I'm not sure what she expected JC to find, but there is a data cube with evidence that Miss Chow was involved in the murder of the previous Red Arrow leader, which was a contributing factor to the ongoing gang war. She also has a connection to Versalife. It's time for Maggie to go to America. You are mistaken, Miss Chow. She should never have sent me to the police station. Now I know she's hiding something and I intend to find out what it is. No, no, you are mistaken. Best Guards. voice acting. Mei Song is both a maid and a bodyguard. She has this weird glitchy pistol animation. Maggie's goons. It's hard to be intimidated by them since we killed so many already. Isn't it weird that all significant woman characters we've met so far were villains? Greetings, JC Denton. I have been observing you through this fascinating device in your skull. You have found the proof we needed. The Dragon's Tooth Sword. The Dragon's Tooth is a lightsaber, except it works using magic nanite technology instead of uh, magic space crystals. The weapon was created by MJ-12. The Triads have no ability to engineer something like this. Now take the sword to Max Chin at the Lucky Money Club. If you can make peace among the Triads... Sounds like a good plan, until you learn that Max Chen, the leader of the Red Arrow, is, or was, in a relationship with Maggie. They have a daughter together. In an early version of the game's story, Maggie Chow is described as Majestic 12th operative who masquerades as Paul Denton's supposed wife. But that plot thread was cut. Oh, and if you are extremely observant, you might have noticed Maggie walking around the secret conspiracy place in the intro cutscene. Anyway, the Nanoblade is one of the reasons the latter half of the game is easier than the first. It's phenomenally powerful, requires no meaningful skill investment, and uh, the only downside is that it occupies a lot of inventory space. It also functions as a lighter. Perfect. I order you to stand in the spotlight and growl at the women like a dog who needs a master. The mall is closed for the night. We can break in, but if the cops see us using a lockpick, they open fire. Whatever, let's get inside the club. Hey, man. Where are you from? The States. We're from Australia. Hmm. On vacation? Let's just wait for Russ. He's kinda cute. What's your name? JC. Is this a good club? Oh, totally. I love the dialogue writing and the delivery, the awkwardness, the pauses. Sometimes characters can be almost incoherent, but that's just how some people are. I enjoy this as an aesthetic, probably not the best close quarters weapon. Lucky Money isn't even that big in terms of space, but it's full of interesting secondary NPCs. Don't you like to dance? You know who liked to dance? The protagonist of Vampire Bloodlines. I've never seen so many troopers. They must be close to a breakthrough. Versalife employees. I think it's just the UC. They've had that for weeks. But word has gotten out. UC stands for Universal Constructor, essentially a Star Trek replicator. In the Deus Sex universe, such technology is theorized to be possible, but uh, still remains a fiction. Or is it? The club is where we meet the game's foremost philosopher, the Lucky Money Bartender. The West, so afraid of strong government, now has no government. Only financial power. Our governments have limited power by design. Rhetoric? You believe it? Don't you know where these slogans come from? I give up. Well-paid researchers. How do you say it? Think tanks? Funded by big businesses. What is that? A think tank? You can barely hear him over the club music, but that's part of the experience. The separation of powers acknowledges the petty ambitions of individuals. A system organized around the weakest qualities of individuals will produce the same qualities in its leaders. What qualities, though? What exactly makes the Premier a good arbiter of ethics? The idea of an enlightened autocrat is... It's mostly just a thought experiment. In real life, most autocrats are morons. Perhaps certain qualities are an inseparable part of human nature. Well, women back home, they aren't like your daughter. I do very much wish to meet her. You are very handsome. You must have many girlfriends in your country. An incel sex tourist. You have thin aristocratic wrist. 
On the third floor, around the pool table, there is a group of Russian sailors. I spill my drink! Here is a fun fact. The voice actor who did the Russian sailors is J. Anthony Frank, who also voiced J.C., Paul, and I'm pretty sure Daedalus, although the latter is not mentioned on his IMDb page. Kaczynski was right about the division of labor. W what? Let's see, well, that's not super interesting. When the technocrats are armed with computers of superhuman intelligence, will they not be able to outsmart us at every step? Robots and intelligent computers will make human labor obsolete, so that the technocrats will no longer have any need for ordinary people to work for them. Armies and police forces of robots will be incorruptibly loyal to their masters, giving the technocrats absolute power over us. Hmm, makes you do a big thinko. I hope the bit with Max Chan having a daughter with Maggie Chow was fan fiction, or we might be in trouble. A one way glass. Currently, we have no work for American style gangsters. I think I'm gonna rob this place. And this must be Max Chan. You must be Max Chan. So? I have found something in Miss Chow's apartment that might interest you. JC explains that it was Maggie who stole the sword and probably murdered his predecessor. She did this to provoke the war and to weaken the triads. Chan, surprisingly, believes us and calls for a truce with the Luminous Path. Funny, we don't actually give him the sword back. It's ours to keep for the entire game. Boss, what is it? Marty at the door so we have trouble. Soldiers coming in. She said I was some kind of mech. MJ-12 troops, they must have followed me. The fighting subsided just as quickly as it began. Two Red Arrow gangsters are dead. What is happening? I'm just glad you guys are okay. They shoot and I run and I spill my drink all over my uniform. Yevgeny was the one. He got us all to come and waste our time. Hey, Yevgeny. Yevgeny, where is Yevgeny? Anyone seen Yevgeny? A Hong Kong cop battles an MJ-12 trooper and wins. I'm fairly sure these are just dudes in power armor, not augmented agents. The truce between the triads means we are finally allowed to meet Paul's mysterious friend. Trace Aton admitted another American. Perhaps you know him. The secret lab is beneath the Luminous Path compound in Wan Chai. So your kill switch has been activated. Yeah, uh, can you maybe do something about that? I haven't slept for days. The lab is all computery and sciencey. This geometry looks like it's from Doom 1, or like a placeholder that was left in the game by accident. Our kill switch is turned off. Just like that, it is a switch. We owe Ton a favor. The only way to ensure long-term stability is to steal the sword blueprints from Versalife and then arm both factions with copies of the sword, because the triads are literally little babies. The American who arrived earlier was Alex. Says he knew Tracer all along without realizing, because they post on the same forum or whatever. I'm getting this from anonymous crypto boys. He also shares an image board level rumor of the possible identity identity of Daedalus. It was supposed to be a surveillance algorithm, he says, but the project failed. But that's not the whole story. What actually happened is that MJ-12 hijacked the original Daedalus algorithm, hoping to repurpose it to scan the net and to identify threats to their power. This ended up backfiring in a very ironic way when the Daedalus pattern matching system classified MJ-12 itself as a terrorist organization. And this is where the backstory gets kind of stupid. Daedalus is the name of the primary internet communications protocol that replaces HTTP. It's in the URL of every single internet address in Deus Ex. Daedalus is an AI, but it's also the internet. Of course, JC, Alex and most people in the world should know what Daedalus is. This almost ruins the character, almost. The complexity of Daedalus is actually a plot point later in the game. Let's go infiltrate Versalife and possibly murder everyone in there. Never mind that punk from your net. The security here is adequate and we have a long-term program guaranteed to make him irrelevant. We call it Icarus. Brutalism. Love it. Do you know where they keep the lightsaber blueprints? You worked at Cyanics? You look like you could have the gift. Wait, psionics are real? Is this XCOM? By the way, did you know that Deus XCOM exists? It's called XCOM Files and it's a mod for a mod for a mod for enemy unknown. I guess it doesn't matter what I say anymore. 
It's because I falsify all the records, okay? They probably don't want you telling people that. This guy is convinced he is a dead man. If we murder the suit in charge, he says, we get lab access. <laughs> Uh, don't mind us, he's just taking a nap. Well, here is your boss. So these are the labs. The events of the intro cutscene took place here, in Hong Kong. This must be one of their major installations. They don't let me talk to lab personnel. Like the hand of Nod from Command and Conqueror. Our work on Fitchov Capra. Capra. A quantum quack. The scientists from physics discriminate against the psionics lab, calling them quacks. Maybe you should cross your legs, undo yourself, and try to read my mind. This is where the actual research is done. An impressive facility. The ROM encoding should be in this wing of the laboratory. The Dragon's Tooth was originally designed for serious P agents, aka Man in Black. We steal the blueprints, but this triggers an unavoidable alarm across the complex. Is that Maggie? In the window? Looks like we underestimated her. She is not just an MJ-12 operative. She appears to be in charge of VersaLife. The man she is talking to is the billionaire Bob Page, the inventor of Aquinas Protocol, the guy from the intro. Wonderful. We'll have to try that trick at Area 51. This is not a real alien. It's an engineered creature like a Karkian. MJ-12 uses them as a tool of misdirection since they resemble the Roswell Greys. We get a bunch of new augs, including a cloaking device. All right, looks like we're done here. Time to extract. Take my advice and get out of here. I can't tell you any more than that. JC is a good person. I foresee they will understand the error only at the end, facing death, when it is no longer possible to worship the samsaric world. We are in the Wan Chai Temple. The Triads finally made peace. Both Mafia bosses will be heading to Lucky Money to get shit-faced together. It is not the way of the Buddha to idolize a material possession. The monks are somewhat skeptical of the trad culture supposedly promoted by the Triads. Your doctor friend is here, down in the infirmary. He must have met Jaime, so he escaped. We will start manufacturing the swords and distributing them to our allies. This is one of his dumb and more pointless ideas, not to mention expensive. If he didn't turn off our kill switch, I would have concluded Ton was a charlatan. Tell me about the labs. Paul and I concluded that VersaLife does the manufacturing, while the real research takes place in North America. Dude, they make fake aliens down there. They have a psionics division. MJ-12 went full on an herb. We need to get back to VersaLife, to a different lab this time, and steal the schematic for Ambrosia. Without the schematic, we'll never understand how it works and how to replicate it. This is what Paul was trying to achieve, and this is why the NSF were attempting to airlift the barrel to Hong Kong. Let's go see how our our gangster friends are doing. We will have the mess cleaned up shortly. The second visit to Lucky Money is optional. The main story doesn't take us here. But I forgot to rob the place, so we're back. Holy shit, look how much cash the receptionist had. They say they pay the police, but no, the police come anyway. These dudes are still here, but the stripper is gone. The luminous path can ship penguins to Norway and document that they came from Japan. The triad leaders are having a dick measuring contest at the bar. Pong's mission can wait. Rest for now. No rest for the wicked. The alternative entrance to VersaLife Labs. There is a device in here called a Universal Constructor. It is one of the only two devices in the world capable of producing the nanomechanical virus called the Great Death. I require you to destroy it. Welp, I suppose it is no longer a stealth operation. Looking badass, JC. At this stage of the game, abandoning stealth in favor of super soldier playstyle is completely viable, at least on the hard difficulty. Not sure about realistic. Cool security system you have here. This storage area would be a logical place to find a stockpile of the virus. I don't know why it's so empty. I'm guessing this is where they manufacture the virus and then deploy it somewhere else. The Universal Constructor is in this facility. Yeah, we're standing right on top of it, actually. Getting Half-Life 1 vibes from this. So, uh, how do we blow it up? 
Here is a random thought. Kung Fu movies were a phenomenon of the 70s and the 80s, maybe the 60s too. Dao Sex was made years before smartphones or social media were invented. If the game was created today, Maggie Chow would probably be an Instagram influencer or an MCU heroine. Turns out you're on your way to being one of Hong Kong's most wanted yourself. I have always been one of the most wanted. I will deal with the police in the way I deal with the slanderous press. How's that? Precisely the way I am going to deal with you. I will die, JC. Maggie is a stock human. She has no visible augmentations of any kind. Obviously, she doesn't pose a real threat to us. I guess this is how we get access to the device. Fuck, what did I do? It seems to be some inventory data here. Ton explains that Versalife has been creating the Great Death in industrial quantities. The inventory was loaded on a ship, a super freighter, heading for New York. Interesting. The previous owner of the ship was Stanton Dowd. Ever hear of the Illuminati? Did you... Was that an AQ drop tracer? The lab is guarded by representatives of both triads. Look who the cat dragged in. Tong fix you up? Yeah, you? You cut it pretty close. Paul got fucked up by the virus pretty bad, but he'll be fine once he recovers. You know, Tong said it was a simple switch, right? So, can it be turned back on once we're back in America? It seems everyone in the world has access to our infolink. Majestic 12 sure does a lot of R&D. Every ruler needs a power base. Without the people, well, you need something to use against them. Yeah, this is the theory of MJ-12. Gunther's in the field now. They say he wants your head. What's wrong with your hands, dude? Gunther went berserk after you escaped. Smashed up the cell block pretty bad. I had to sedate him. Don't know if I care for your sense of humor. Humor? The Illuminati stuff. I was risking my life in there. JC is the best. He knows about the existence of fake aliens, a Star Trek replicator, crocodile-bear hybrids, a corporation that manufactures both a virus and a cure. But he draws a line at Illuminati. No tracer. That's nonsense. What do they have to do with Majestic 12? A question for Dowd. I will contact him in New York. Hopefully he will agree to meet you. Hey Max, I've seen Maggie. She said she's going to America for a while. We are going back to the States as well. Dowd is one of the Illuminati. He is a former owner of a super freighter used by MJ-12 to transport the virus to New York. It was a group of conspirators within the Illuminati that formed Majestic 12 <coughs> to begin with. No time to waste. You need to get to the Underworld Tavern and make contact with Harley Philbin. Harley Philbin is the bomb secret agent who helped us at the statue in the beginning of the game. We've met him a few times. In Deo Sex, some of the most well-connected people are either homeless or pretend to be homeless. The city is under martial law. There was a riot after it was revealed that the government had a vaccine. Explains why there are so few people in the tavern. I'm gonna say this once. That German mech from Yanako already came by looking for you. You got money to spend? Fine. This curfew's killing me, but leave me out of your business. That guy's oiled up and ready for a fight. Gunther. Do you want something or not? No, I'm good. I just came out to look up a girl I used to know. Sandra Renton? FEMA gave me a pass for the curfew. She left town. I know, I know. This guy, Vinny, is a USMC soldier who works at the nearby naval base. It was unceremoniously overtaken by FEMA, he complains. I never mentioned. I've been working for the NSF all along. And the Illuminati. I'm on your side. Right, the Illuminati. Philbin can put us in contact with Dowd. And JC, be careful who you mention the Illuminati to. Like Joe Green. He's a spy for Yanatko. The reporter? Are you sure? Here's the proof. Hey, kill Green and you'll be doing all of us a favor. Wait, that's your proof? A bunch of MJ-12 dudes talking to Green? I get it that this is a video game, but come on! We need to have a higher standard of evidence than this. He's a journalist. It's his literal job to speak to all kinds of weird people and spooks. Christ, this photo might be showing him being interrogated by fascist paramilitaries. There is even some evidence of that. Like, for example, this MJ-12 goon is standing behind the man, possibly with an intent of making him feel vulnerable. Incorrect inform. Uh, attach. Streets clear. 
Uh, Daedalus, are you okay? Someone is hacking the internet. Very few patients and bums at the free clinic. There are no doctors anymore. The bots still work. All right, let's see what Green has to say for himself. You aren't a reporter at all. You work for UNATCO. Guess you scooped me this time. Wait, that's it? And he's just gonna run away? That must be an imposter. The real Joe Green would have found a way to convince us that it's Philbin who is a spy. No shit. Man, you really did change sides. Yeah, I joined the fucking Taliban, it looks like. Yes. Password? Bloodshot. I'm showing net activity on several of the smuggler's avatars. He must be at home. I know, Tracer. He just answered the phone. So you finally wised up and joined the NSF. I don't know if I've joined anything, except maybe the people. Luhansk People's Fucking Republic. Smuggler has a crate of grenades for sale. In the next two levels, the game will insist on providing us with as many grenades and rockets as possible, because we'll need to blow up something for the main story to progress. What the hell? He installed a grenade-proof glass. Not gonna stop me. Philbin said most of the Majestic 12 are hand-me-downs from the Illuminati. A bunch of pretentious old men playing and running the world. But the world left them behind long ago. We are the future. This is Dowd. Why a vacant building? I thought the Illuminati were bankers, politicians, Council on Foreign Relations types. <coughs> we always stayed in the background, even when that was true. He caught the Great Death. Perhaps if we find some ambrosia on the ship, we can bring it to him. The only facility big enough on the East Coast <coughs> is the Advanced Submarine Facility at the Brooklyn Naval Shipyards. Isn't that where Vinny works? The plan is to scuttle the ship. For this purpose, Dowd provides us with the detailed blueprint of the super freighter. We'll have to place explosives at these critical points below decks. The conspirators were far more ruthless than we were. We couldn't compete. You guys are has-beens. Well, let's go blow up a cancer tanker. This one's some kind of mech. You must be dead. Who's asking? Our buddy Vinny sent word will be coming, so the Marines, frustrated at FEMA for evicting them from their own base, opened the gate for us. I have begun planning your future objectives. Dow will be sending you to Paris. Make sure he gives you the current residence of his associate, Morgan Everett. Glad you are feeling better, Daedalus. The patrolling soldiers inside the base will shoot on sight. This is a good moment to remember how to use all of our non-lethal weapons, since the Marines didn't really run us in any way. Hmm, what's there? Oh fuck! These yellow-blue things are scrambler grenades. Robots caught in the blast radius are reprogrammed to be our friends. The effect is permanent, I'm pretty sure. Hell yeah, mech warrior. The cargo elevator isn't the only way of accessing the inner parts of the base, but I'm pretty sure it's the easiest. You won't believe this, JC. There was a raid on smugglers. I just saw Gunter get into a copter on the roof and head back to Yonatko. I don't think Smuggler got out in time. I had no idea Smuggler could die. Initially, I assumed this is because we botched the rescue of his chemist friend. But the wiki tells me Smuggler died because we failed to warn him that there is a raid coming. That's the super freighter. The dock is patrolled by MJ-12 goons. The ship itself is guarded by Chinese soldiers. There is another way to find Everett. He has a mistress named Beth Duclair. Remember that name when you get to Paris. It's super cool that we're going to Paris. The shipyard levels are huge, with multiple ways in and out, tons of opportunities to be sneaky, plenty of secrets to find, raw Deus Ex gameplay. The captain has a Star Wars communicator in his cabin. Is it gonna be Walton Simons? Of course it's him. I believe these devices allow for communication with Walton and no one else. It's a Walton phone. The captain was forced into MJ-12 service because Simons was threatening his family. The ship's armory has tons of explosives if you somehow fail to collect enough. And in the lab we find a tiny vial of ambrosia. Very convenient. Dowd will live. This combination of industrial environment, high-tech looking weapons, puzzles, and mafia enemies reminds me of the old boomer shooter Sin. Hey, aim for the head. Many Chinese crewmen are armed with lamb grenades. These are very unsafe. 
There are tons of exploding barrels and crates all over the level. The helicopter is lightsaber resistant. You want to consider dropping off an application? We can always use another hand. Actually, most dock workers and marines were very helpful and there is a sense of solidarity among them. Maybe I will drop an application if this career of globetrotting terrorist doesn't work out. I don't know how to get there, whatever happens, happens. Wait, where do I submit the... Hopefully sinking the ship will destroy the virus. Hopefully it won't poison the ocean or anything like that. We need to get to the shipyard's roof. Jock should be waiting for us there. What is this thing? Is this Knights of the Old Republic? Tong says Dowd discovered something about the plague. Starting to think like us, huh? <clears throat> be careful. Paranoia is a drug. You can get addicted. It's a short flight to the cemetery, our meeting place. Dowd has a family crypt here. Yes? I'm here to meet with Dowd. Just a minute. I'll be right out to let you in. Jock takes off. Do you hear these electronic sounds? Mr. Dowd awaits you in the family mausoleum. Strange. There are no computers here. Isn't that interesting? Some sort of a surveillance device, perhaps. He is expecting you. There is too much on the line to take unnecessary risks. The mausoleum. A unique set of textures and meshes not used anywhere else in the game. I brought you something for that cough. Hope it works. Ambrosia. The leader of the Illuminati is the man called Morgan Everett. The Illuminati are businessmen, but they are also inventors, and they had a tradition of signing their inventions like a painter would sign a picture. As Dow discovered, the Great Death Virus has Everett's signature. Does it mean he was the one who made it? Well, no. But he did make a prototype version that was eventually turned into Great Death by MJ-12, a rogue cell of Everett's organization. Page was his protege. We need to go to Paris, make contact with Silhouette, find Morgan Everett. JC, I'm coming in fast. LZ is hot, so get to me as soon as you can. The wiki says the thing we destroyed wasn't a surveillance device. It was an EM disruption field generator that would prevent Jock from landing once it's active. Everett, right? The leader of the Illuminati? How come everyone in this game knows about Illuminati? Finally, a trip to Europe. Through her mother's estate, she has provided Silhouette with immense amounts of funding. Where the hell are we? This Paris? Doesn't look like I imagined it would. We are on top of a derelict high-rise building. MJ-12 troops openly patrol the streets of Paris. The organization is even stronger in Europe, it seems. We need to get to the catacombs, where the local version of the NSF resides. The cat lady complains that some of her cats were eaten by raptor chickens. And who are you? Are you, like, Daedalus but evil? Who's this? Everything, huh? Is that God you're talking about, or just a bunch of New Age crap? Our AI stalker, Icarus, sends us creepy messages via landline. This line has been shut down by order of UNESCO. The entrance to the catacombs is nearby. It's a... it's a dungeon, both in a literal and in a video game sense. You found the bunker. Meet Silhouette. We are surrounded. We don't have much time. This is their hideout. So, the French NSF is literally a bunch of homeless people. This is excellent news. The homeless have proven to be a powerful political force in Dao's sex. I'm JC Denton. You might know my brother Paul. I helped him send your group a warning about the crackdown. Denton? Mm, yes, the satellite transmission saved us from La Prison de France, at least. Chad is the leader of Silhouette. He is friends with one Nicolette Duclair, daughter of deceased Beth Duclair, who was one of the leaders of Illuminati. Nicolette will hopefully put us in contact with Everett. Chad will help us if we rescue his friends who are being held by MJ-12 elsewhere in the dungeon. At this point, we can take out an unlimited number of MJ grunts in open combat, but them having hostages makes things more... complicated. But not a whole lot more complicated. You just have to kill them extra efficiently. We have to get moving. Despite knowing the risks, Nicolette has been spending a lot of time at a local club. Her mother's death made her nihilistic. Nicolette has been someone mysterious about our reasons for supporting us. 
I do not pretend to understand her. Child doesn't appear to be woke on Illuminati. Ah, the Paris nightlife. Have a taste of wine for me, JC. Paris is not as big as the Hong Kong level or Hell's Kitchen, but for a late game location there is a surprising amount of optional content and secondary characters to talk to. It's almost like a real hub. This is an excellent opportunity to demonstrate the full power of the upgraded active defense system. Not only are we invulnerable to missiles, the premature explosions take out a bunch of MJ-12 troops via friendly fire. The establishment is still open despite the martial law. This crackdown is the work of Majestic 12. You mean the European Union? The waiter is a Eurosceptic. From the overheard conversations, it would seem MJ-12 is openly taking power all across the continent. Commandos are just overkill on a job like this. How are the drinks here? Great, if you like red peas. Never tried it. The French gangster in white wants us to rob the nearby bakery owned by the Sicilian Mafia. They are hiding large quantities of Zyme, the drug, in the ovens, he says. Be careful of those two. They are felons. I gathered. I am serious. Do not give them your name or where you live. We live in Jock's helicopter, I think. I spent a few lockpicks getting into the bakery, but it's worth it. The gangster will buy every single one of these vials. We must work together again when I find out where they will move the drop off. I'll be out of town, but thanks for the cash. Another career opportunity if we ever get tired of being a terrorist or an engineer. The Sicilians. You are correct to wish to leave town. What if I told you that the depression was caused by a cabal of wealthy businessmen who want to rule the world? These stories, I hear them every day. Always from someone who wants to blame other people for his bad luck. This guy is more of a life coach than a philosopher. Observe your motivations for breaking the arbitrary laws of current government. Do not miss your chance to be one of us and create the new world order. Dude, calm the fuck down, I'm just here to rob the place. It seems in the future they are back to using CDs for data storage. Ton makes an infolink call and says it's meaningless to spend money on those, because you can get pirated copies for cheap in Hong Kong. Interesting anachronism. You found the club. The only one to stay open during martial law. That's uh, actually the back entrance. We'll be getting in through the front door. I think I finally struck the perfect balance between the Dionysian and Apollonian. The name of the club. La Porte de l'Enfer. Means the gates of hell. 300 credits. What kind of accent is this? I guess it's a tolerable atmosphere. The guard with a combat shotgun ruins it a little. You have a look. He has a tough guy look, but you cannot compare to a real revolutionary. They have their own private society upstairs. A private society of revolutionaries in a tacky nightclub? That doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. Go, cat, go! Oh, hey, uh, Arthur? Are you having a stroke, my dude? I know the bathroom is unisex, but just wait a minute, will you? Yeah, sorry. I'm not used to that. I'm not from here. Chad's dead. No. The police are making a clean sweep through the catacombs. Silhouette knows what to do in these situations. I told him this would happen. But he would not let go of his Voltaire delusion. Maybe he is a Voltaire. Was Voltaire. Chad is not dead, but uh, he is somewhat underwritten. Spoiler, he plays an important role in the sequel. We get a rather iconoclastic crowd these days. The place does not fill up until very late. What makes you think Nicolette would betray one of her mother's closest friends? Well, we helped her buddy Chad and killed a battalion of MJ-12 troops. We also blew up the Star Trek replicator they had in Hong Kong. Paige has a trained army to protect him. He is still vulnerable. Much of his power comes from secret laboratories, meaning the right person could reverse engineer his whole power base. A somewhat naive take. What about all the financial capital behind Paige? Can Everett mobilize similar resources? Nicolette doesn't know how to contact the man directly, but she has some ideas on what we should be doing next. Is that Gunter down there? <laughs> So this is Chateau Duclair, Nicolette's former home. Hopefully her mother left clues how to reach her colleague. It's just JC and Nicolette. The level is otherwise completely empty. Crazy. I lost my virginity out here. What, like in this little park? Sounds uncomfortable. I'm pulling up the floor plan. An old summer home built during the Third Republic. 
This level is just as big as most others. Tons of rooms to search, many little bits of Illuminati lore to uncover. My mom had that couch flown in from Portugal. Exactly the same as what she could have bought at La Samaritaine, except that it was once graced by the bottoms of a royal family. You keep a human skull in your room? Very edgy, Nicolette. Mom thought it was easier to keep her activities secret in the country. Operational security was the literal reason she managed to stay alive for as long as she did. I think my mother kept a room key behind a little vase. Yeah, here it is. This must be Beth's room. Nicolette says her mother could stare at this painting for hours. In France, the gentry keep their wine in a small cellar to preserve the flavor from... I'll be brutally honest, I could never tell one wine from another. The most obvious secret door in the world conceals the hidden bunker built by the previous owner to hide the Jews during the Nazi rule. Beth's private study. We use the terminal to send a message to Everett. So you found Beth's computer. We are destined to meet, perhaps. If you are truly our ally, you will help me access the MG-12 computer network. He wants us to prove we have good intentions. We are to infiltrate the Cathedral of Knights Templar, right here in Paris. Mom and Everett used to sit out here sipping martinis and plotting to take over the world. That's how we all got in this mess. Look out, JC, I'm picking up the signatures in the sewers. Yeah, Jock, but these are just common power armor troopers. They are basically just rats at this point. Fitting that they came from the sewer. Hey, Nicolette, you coming? I'm going to stay to go through some of my mother's things. Well, it was nice meeting you. If you are ever in Hong Kong, check out Lucky Money. It's like ten times more fun than the gates of hell. Try to ignore the smell. This sewer connects to a street near the cathedral. Every time you get involved, Tracer, I always end up covered in shit. You were just a prototype, Denton. A prototype for me. Keep going past the metro station. The cathedral is to the south. I know you are trying to help, Daedalus, but the initial part of the level is completely linear. In order to reach the cathedral, you just press and hold W. No, I'm not sure what's up with the rectangle. But once we get to the destination, it becomes a classic Deus Ex level with multiple objectives, many ways in and out, and even a non-hostile NPC we can convince to help us. Once I knelt in this chapel for communion with two Rockefellers and a Rothschild. Since the time of the Crusades, every leader in finance has prayed for the continued stability of Templar banks, founded on gold. If we can locate their gold reserves, they will be confiscated to aid the cause. Ah, a good library, worth its weight in gold. Dude, there are only like four books here. As a subdivision of the Illuminati, Majestic 12 existed for a long time. The game begins in 2052. At this point, the organization has been around for over a hundred years. And yet, we know almost nothing about how it works internally. What's its culture like? In the barracks, we find a journal belonging to a freshly recruited MJ Grunt. I was told this was a private security organization, but I should have known something was going on when they didn't ask about the damned discharge. Stupid. Now I'm walking the line at some gloomy-ass church in the middle of Paris. Nothing for company but a bunch of brain-dead zombies dressed in black and that crazy cook. If they want a hamburger, why not go to an American hamburger franchise? Food isn't that great. Can't even get a bottle of ketchup. And then this German macog shows up yesterday. You're a small, prowling mouse. And dumb like a mouse. You keep coming, like you forget about it another. I remember each of I remember for everyone. I knew a lot of stone cold people in the service, but this guy looks like he got murder on his mind. He stands down there in the tech archive like a bot. I was on patrol in the cellar for 10 hours and he didn't move once. It's like he's waiting for something. I think I heard him crying. The Templar's vault. We found the gold. Everett phones in and tells us he'll have Chad and crew take it away. I have given him control of an NSF platoon on loan to me from America, he says. The woman in black is Adept 34501 of the Order of the Night Sky. We know this because she is also a journal haver. Today saw so the arrival of Agent Herman. Yes, obey your new masters. Come to me. He has spent most of his time below the technology archive, staring at the ancient cross above his head. He burns with hatred for himself and for someone else. I think it has burned away everything human in him, and only the metal holds him together anymore. 
I'm just kidding. We can't do Gunther like that. Now you see that you cannot succeed all alone against the whole world. You came all the way to Paris to tell me that. It is a simple message I am demonstrating. We know where you are going and what you intend. That doesn't mean you can stop me. I have been upgraded for this assignment. The dialogue depends on JC's relationship with the mech. Gunther can be either hostile or hostile but respectful. He is actually relatively tough and, like most older augmented designs, he self-destructs on death. All I can say is that a fully upgraded cloaking device is fantastic to have. You give yourself up. Yes, the harm is superficial. The harm is superficial. You see how he tried to run away in the end? You don't actually have to kill Gunther. You don't have to kill anyone in this game. The only individual who absolutely has to die in order for the story to progress is Anna Navarra. And just like it is the case with Anna, it is possible to get rid of Gunther via kill phrase. Remember when we had an option to tell Jaime to stay in Unatco as our spy? If he did, he would have met us in a cafe in Paris and revealed the kill phrase. The footage you see is borrowed from someone else. We know where you are going and what you intend. And I know something about you. I know your Unatco kill phrase. The Putin machine. I am not a machine. Sticks and stones. The phrase itself refers to the flying city of Laputa, from Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. The Laputans were masters of theoretical engineering, but completely lacking in practical mechanical knowledge. So the devices they produced are tremendously innovative on paper, but flawed in practice, like Gunther himself. This is from the wiki. I'm not sure what's so innovative about Gunther. The MJ-12 Network Hub. Oh hey, Simons is on the phone. We did certainly teach you how to fight, didn't we? You're worried, Simons. We almost have a cure. You have nothing. Even if Everett succeeds, you can't synthesize enough vaccine to stop an epidemic. You need a universal constructor, and don't think Page Industries is going to leave one lying around for you to use. Not after you blew up the one in Hong Kong. I was never properly trained in its operation. Laugh it up, Denton. Next time we won't use an old box of bolts like Gunter. The only reason I let him go to Paris is that I was sick of his moaning about Navarra and constant requests for a tune-up. You sent him because you knew he would fight to the death. He was the last of the mechs. Next time you will face someone of your own abilities. Looking forward to it, bitch. You bring the Illuminati closer to a gaining power. Examine what you are doing. You are hearing the voice of a Majestic 12 AI. No need to be alarmed. For now. I can protect you and Daedalus for a day or so. The French Metro looks a uh, European-y. JC Denton, I will take you to Everett, but you will be forbidden to learn the way yourself. Fine, whatever. I'm extremely curious about Everett. The conspiracy is about to begin again, JC, between you and me. Nicolette was wise to bring us together. Wise like her mother. I'm not sure what all the secrecy was for. We can clearly see out of the window. This is a rich person's home, somewhere in Paris, surrounded by historical-looking buildings. Probably more than enough information for a bunch of nerds to geolocate this place using open data. The man has a nice apartment. The Illuminati is in your to govern the world. Do not be deceived. Fucking robocalls. Good news, huh? Looks like we might pull this thing off. Hey, it's Alex. Ton sent him here to provide technical assistance and to keep an eye on Everett. Ton doesn't trust the Illuminati. Something is happening to him. He had to leave Hong Kong. You missed dinner, but help yourself to a snack. So this is where the Illuminati ended up after centuries of conspiring to rule the world. Meet the boss. We have two goals. Since the vaccine itself is nanotechnology, we need to gain access to a universal constructor in order to replicate it. The second goal is preparing Daedalus for the battle with Icarus. The Echelon kernel was designed almost exclusively for collecting data, so we have to add functionality for memory wipes, threat termination, that kind of thing. Everett thinks it would benefit the AI if we were to gain access to the American military networks. We are going to Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The place is now a research complex run by XMJ-12 dissidents who call themselves X-51. They are some of the best scientific minds in the world, and they do possess the only existing universal constructor on the planet. But Everett is frustrated. The eggheads don't even coordinate with the NSF. The anti-MJ action is disorganized. Someone 
has to bring those disparate groups together. We are firmly in the late game. You might be expecting the experience to be more streamlined at this stage, but it's actually the opposite. There are three important missable things in Everett's apartment. First, there is Lucius de Beers, formerly the leader of the Illuminati, in a cryopod. What are you doing back here? Denton, right? Yeah. You're alive in that thing? The man was dying, and he had to be put in the pod until the technology was invented to restore him to health. I was the one who warned him about Paige. What he doesn't know is that the technology has been available for decades. Everett has no intention of reviving him. The Shodan-looking blue thing in the projector is called Morpheus. It's a prototype for Daedalus. The unplanned organism is a question asked by nature and answered by death. I believe the dev intention was to make it talk in a hyper-efficient language of academic philosophy, which is near incomprehensible for mere mortals, but instead the AI comes off uh, almost as a poet. You will soon have your garden, and you will make it with your own hands. Morpheus expresses the opinion that religion is a form of social technology, and that God was a dream of good government. I am a prototype of a much larger system. The AI also has access to a suspicious amount of information about JC. So you have your own private echelon system. Mr. Denton, your pilot is waiting. Wait, what's this? Huh? Is there a problem? Just looking around. I, I checked her out. She's fueled up and ready to go. Is something wrong? Huh? No, I said I checked her out. You want the thing to run, right? If you're gonna cross the ocean. Better safe than sorry. When I played the game for the first time, I failed to notice the body and the imposter, so Jock died in one of the later missions. The chopper blew up. Just have to pull this wire. There. Relax. I disabled the detonator. We can drop the thing in the Atlantic on the way back to the States. This concludes our trip to Europe. Mr. Kennedy mentions a plot during a speech at Columbia University. He's out? Oh yeah, Lucius was behind the Kennedy assassination. Attack my systems and you will suffer considerable losses. Jock drops us off on a roof of the research complex. The place is being invaded by MJ-12. The scientists sealed themselves in the command center. The exterior is patrolled by bots. Our immediate objective is to take them out. Paige probably needs reaction level components. When we walked, we took everything smaller than a paperclip. Interesting how renegades have a renegade faction of their own. X-51 specialists understand way too much about advanced technology for Paige to simply leave them alone. The Vandenberg complex, well, it's like a little piece of Black Mesa. Corridors, elevators, vents, radioactive hazards. Here is a very Black Mesa-esque jumping puzzle. Can't touch the floor. The red nano -y thing is the Grey Death Virus. The place is full of MJ troops, commandos and MIBs, but the idea that they can stop us is ridiculous. At this stage, we're basically Batman. I'm not trapped here with you, you're trapped here with me. X-51 was mentioned by Paige in the intro cutscene. It's a little strange they managed to survive this lawn without outside help. Surely MJ-12 have enough gap guns and law launchers to take out their robot defenses. Enemy bot destroyed. Three left. Thoughtful of them to stockpile Ambrosia. So yeah, the robots. Just activate the missile defense system and wait for them to kill themselves. Using strength augment to move heavy barrels and preserve our own explosives. I cannot survive much longer. Help me acquire Milnet access. This is the Milnet access hub. Looks, um, hazardous. Wait, is that... Mr. Carter. Yep, they ran the old dog out. You were dismissed? All of his career types. Carter always knew more than he let on. Pretty sure he was in contact with Chad. I guess it's not surprising to find a few crooks in a place protected by security procedures. The shadow of secrecy. It protects indiscriminately. And that's savage. Thank you. We were close to surrendering when you landed. They do have a UC, but it's missing some key components. The scientists sent a little expeditionary force to the Majestic 12 Ocean Lab, but they haven't returned yet. First things first, we need to help Daedalus. This here terminal should do it. I am. I'm losing Daedalus. Yes. Hold on, some things. You forgot about the Aquinas Protocol. I was listening to Daedalus all along. Waiting. The AI 
AIs seem to be merging. It was a trap. Page played us. But what does it mean the AIs are merging? Excellent. We're all here. You aren't in a position to make any demands, Page. On the contrary... It's weird to see other people using the Walton phone. Page captured the members of X-51 expedition to the Ocean Lab, including Savage's daughter. She's being held hostage. He wants us to surrender some of the critical UC parts back to MJ-12. Trust me, she'll be fine. I don't think we've ever botched a hostage rescue in this playthrough yet. Oh wait, fuck! It's still nighttime, but it looks like the dawn is finally coming. Believe it or not, sometimes I miss the Ton and Janie and Jordan Shea and all the rest of it. The gas station is a tiny micro level. Try to make a silent approach. If the guards think it's a raid, they might decide to kill Savage's daughter. Jock's advice is on point. This is not a guns blazing super soldier kind of operation. The Mibs will execute Tiffany if they know JC is nearby. In the year 2030, that is more than two decades ago, a major earthquake hit the West Coast, destroyed most of San Francisco, Los Angeles, and parts of Southern California. I'm freezing my ass off over here. You said that already. I'll say it again. I'm freezing my ass off. What am I supposed to do about it? You won't do nothing. I already told you. I'm gonna handle it. Wait, is that Sandra Renton? You weren't kidding about leaving New York. Here I am. Other side of the continent. How'd you end up at a vacant gas station near the ruins of Los Angeles? I was hitching a ride to Eugene and this jerk pulls a gun on me, takes everything I have and dumps me on the side of the road. That's terrible. I was pretty down for a while. You can always go back. No, I know how to stick to a plan. I'll walk to Eugene if I have to. Feels wrong to leave her here without any money. One of the bums is, of course, a merchant of advanced technology. This abandoned gas station store has the most post-apocalyptic feel out of all the places we've visited. There is even still food on the shelves, like in a Bethesda game. Two gas grenades. This should prevent whoever is inside from activating the alarm. Savage's daughter. Yeah, looks just like the picture. They caught me at the submarine base trying to steal one of their mini-subs. Do you really think there's a containment unit in the Ocean Lab? We need the schematic to finish building our own UC, the Star Trek replicator thing that can be used to produce the vaccine against the Great Death. Yes, you'll go to the Ocean Lab. You'll help me acquire the Universal Constructor. So I take it Helios is the AI amalgamation, born from the merger of Icarus with our buddy Daedalus. Not long till the sunrise. I'll get by. I always do. A cure? A cure? Do you have any idea how easy it will be for me to make a new virus? All I have to do is find a very large prime number and multiply. The sub-base is uh, basically a series of interconnected modules. One of them is located on shore, others in or above the water. This is where the actual subs are stored. We need to hijack one in order to reach the ocean lab. The exterior is patrolled by bots, and if you make too much noise killing those, you'll get noticed by the snipers above. You Denton? Savage said to expect someone on a mission to the Ocean Lab. Denton's an old code name from my UNATCO days. It seems nobody in Page's organization is actually loyal to Page, except maybe Walt. Hmm, been a while since we've seen him in the flesh. This laboratory's treatment of animals is abominable. I'd report this facility myself, but right now I need the job. The underwater structure seems to be larger and more complex than the sub-base. You must be Denton. How? I've been in contact with Dr. Savage. Like I said, nobody actually believes in Paige. Everyone is a traitor. The URV bay is in this module. You might not hear from me again. Not sure if a microwave transmission can reach the ocean lab. Here are the mini-subs. This is how we get to the installation below. There is no cutscene or anything. We're just here. The place looks... looks like it's out of commission. Look out the window to the northeast. The building with the green beacon is the crew module. It should contain a lift that goes down to the manufacturing level. Near the body of an MJ-12 trooper, we find a handwritten journal detailing what happened to the lab. Ridley was a traitor. No idea who he was working for, and I don't really care. He's dead now. 
He was one of the scientists. He said explosives drowned half of the lab, killed most of the others by remote when the robots and turrets went crazy. Kept babbling about illuminated ones right up until the end. So this Ridley fellow was an indoctrinated agent working for the Illuminati. Interesting choice of tactics, Severett. The Ocean Lab feels like you're exploring Von Braun in System Shock 2. The excavation site. The base was being expanded. There is a railroad. An underwater railroad. Road. The enemies on this level are various manufactured species that escaped from their cells. Again, this makes the whole experience feel like system shock. I will be able to see anything, build anything, do anything. I have no idea why Paige decided to randomly share his ultimate plan with us. I don't think he has any friends. He intends to somehow connect his mind to Helios, which is also the net. Since the world's institutions require net access in order to do their basic functions, and the net itself is centralized in Area 51 via Aquinas Protocol, I believe the idea is that he will literally control the world with his mind. The Universal Constructor is guarded by a giant spider bot, the only robot of this type in the game. And here is the UC. Schematic should be stored on the computer in the I can barely hear you, Savage. We hack the terminal and download the schematic. It looks like a Soyuz spaceship. Do you think we should bully Paige by ignoring his phone call? Your greatest strength was secrecy, but now we know everything, including your present location. Always the optimist. You would need an army to attack me at Area 51, and pretty soon, if the missile is accurate, you- Not only did he manage to get the copy of the schematic, his goons took over an American missile silo not far from here. They are preparing to launch a nuke at Vandenberg. And there are other problems. You ended up working for us anyway. How ironic. I was just thinking about you, Walt. Remember that NSF gentleman I had to dispatch back at UNACO headquarters? Guess you were bitten by the same bug. There's only one cure, you know. The cure is love. If you recall our chat in the break room at UNATCO, you know that I have the same augmentation technology as you. Then this will be a good fight? With the exception that I have a newer version of the firmware. Presented without comment. Hey, Walt, get up. Let's fight. Come on, get the fuck up! I think Gunther was right. Anna was the only qualified murderer in the MJ crew. A scuba diver, armed with a crossbow and a lamb grenade. Crossbows work underwater. Let's get back to the surface and figure out what to do about the missile coming our way. Page said he was launching a missile at Vandenberg. Exactly. His troops occupied a silo to the north of here. Page didn't make demands. He wants X-51 vaporized. Apparently it takes a while to launch a missile. We can still make it to the silo. You know, it's very convenient that Page chose to take over a silo that is close to Vandenberg. If they took over an installation on the opposite end of the country, we'd be fucked. I'm not standing up for Simons. He was careless. So's Page. He hands over an entire operation to an opportunist like Howard Strong. I would watch what I say about Bob Page. The control room is underground. The security code we have is 8456, but that's an old piece of trivia from our days at Area 51. The base looks like it's seen better days. Why'd they change the codes? Howard Strong. They want his group to have exclusive access to the silo. Always trusting civilians. I love it when a game simply never stops introducing new characters. A wooden wall with holes in it and carcasses of old cars. This is what every Russian military base in the 90s looked like. Did the US have a perestroika? We access the silo itself via the air vents. I wonder if the code Savage gave us still works. Holy crap, it does! But there is another security door. The same code can't possibly work twice, can it? But it does! The missile command center is operated by men in black. Wait, how can they see me? I have a cloaking device. Oh, it's the headlight. It must have been weird. Imagine a hovering light that just floated into the room. The abort switch is straight ahead. First, abort the launch. Then use the terminal on the left to reprogram the missile to hit Area 51. That's actually a hysterical plan. I hope it works. We're gonna nuke Page. Launch sequence initiated. 
It's gonna be a sunny day at Area 51. MJ troops were ordered to sabotage the launch. That must be Howard Strong, a candidate for Walt's now empty chair. You're doing great. Your imitation of Simons is superb. You won this round, but I've still got Helios and we're a mile underground. Time for Plan C. Let's get out of here. There's a hero's welcome waiting for you at Vandenberg. We're going to Area 51. Alone? Don't you think we should regroup first? I'm going after Bob Page. It's almost dawn. It's gonna be over very soon. The missile exits the silo as the chopper takes off. You aren't even afraid, are you? We got a lot of things right when we made you, Denton, but don't worry. I know your weaknesses. Just spotted a sniper in the tower. Welcome to Nevada. It's just as radioactive as in the other game. If you fail to spot the traitor in Everett's hideout, this is where Jock dies. The story doesn't need the helicopter anymore, because this is the final level. Most of the surface part of Area 51 was destroyed by the nuke and is inaccessible for exploration. Unfortunately for us, the damage was mostly superficial, as the main installation is located deep underground. This computer opens the blast doors. These blast doors are the reason I don't have to worry about nukes. Helios, please inform Mr. Page that the doors are open. The schematics show an elevator to the west, but utility power is down. You can be certain that I've installed a few surprises. The surprises being these two Page Industries patrol bots. There are so many mechanical enemies in the late game that I think the augmentation that makes us invisible to robots might be worth it. Unfortunately, it has to be installed in place of a cloaking device. This should activate the main elevator. Jock told us about this place in the beginning of the game, remember? A lot of rock comes out of there, he said. It's a long way down. A moment more and I will be like nothing you've ever seen. A new life form everywhere and nowhere. Like air or radiation, redundant. Self-replicating. So this is how he sees his ascension. This merged being isn't just gonna be human plus, is it? Page is further down. Find the elevator. Your primary objective is to kill Page, JC. Our allies, various factions and individuals were working together out of mutual necessity. Soon the common enemy will be out of the picture. And then what? And I wanted to warn you about Tracer Tong. Tong's helping out from Vandenberg. The vaccine worked. Yes, well, he has another motive. He wants you to destroy Area 51. That's the plan. No, JC. Spare the facility. Spare Helios the power station. They can be made to service. At no point of this story did Everett tell us what he wants to do once he has the power. What does it mean to live a good life according to Morgan Everett? What is a just world to the Illuminati? Area 51 is a giant multi-level dungeon that acts as a final test of everything we've learned. Mines, patrolling mechs, MJ grunts and MIBs. Interesting that the latter are an Illuminati invention. Do what you think's right, JC. Only listen to your own conscience. Thanks, Paul. I needed to hear that. Bet you didn't know your mom and dad tried to protest when we put you in training. They love their little boy, help? JC, and that's that why they're oh. dead. Yeah. Sorry, Paige, you were saying? I wasn't paying attention. Hey, it's Tracer. The Aquinas Protocol, originally for surveillance, has given Paige unlimited abilities to censor and control all forms of media. This is the only part of Tong's argument that makes sense. Area 51 is unique in just how much sophisticated surveillance technology is concentrated here. Whoever controls Area 51 can exercise incredible influence over the world. A dangerous amount of power for a single entity to have. The destruction of Area 51 will vaporize the Aquinas hub, which would destroy the net, paralyze all net-based services, and erase all information hosted online. This, according to Ton, will usher the new dark age of craftsmen, small government, people living in villages. A bunch of stuff happened to Ton off-camera that we didn't get to see. He accidentally caught the Great Death via a botched lab experiment, became frustrated with his work, traveled to Vandenberg to get cured. The sickness changed his outlook on technology. A corpse, yes. You feel something. I must know what you're feeling. French philosopher Georges Bataille thought that the purpose of life was to waste the energy of the sun. Come to that, Miss Hub. Until you have received my instructions, 
I will not open the blast doors to Sector 4. Siding with Helios is the third ending. Two giant bombs waiting to blow. But first you will have to go to Sector 4 to shut down the coolant. Watch out for the escaped greys down below. Wait, what was that about escaped greys? They still there? Who? The greys. They're right outside by the reactors. You mean space aliens? The engineer explains that the greys might have super brains, but since they were raised in cells like animals, they never actually developed a culture or language. They don't know anything about anything. I guess the giant spider bot in the ocean lab wasn't unique. We'll bring back the old institutions, <clears throat> the prosperity of the last century, the giddy acquiescence. Trust us, JC. We can put the world back together. Now there's a voice I haven't heard in years. Rueful, as I would expect for the fall of the Illuminati, pining for its return, either nostalgic or senile. Oh well, the old take comfort in delusions. No harm done. You guys should get on Twitter. This is Aquinas Hub. The thing on the top is the integration unit. You go to Sector 4 and deactivate the uplink locks. Yes. Then you will come back and we will integrate our systems. I don't understand. What do you want? You're just a machine. Believe it or not, Paige is getting cuckolded by his pet AI once again. Helios doesn't give a dead dog's dick about Majestic 12 and wants to merge with JC. I have chosen you. Trust me. I will use the security bots to protect you. Daedalus was originally designed to scan the net, identify threats, and offer advice. Icarus has a more decisive personality, but lacks creativity and moral discretion. Helios understands its role is to govern humanity, but it doesn't know what humanity wants. What does it mean to live a good life? What numbers need to go up? Merging with JC will make Helios understand human perspective. I wonder what it feels like to be merged with an AI. The way Paige described it, it's sounded like he intended to become a distributed being. I think this means like a living torrent file. Do you even need a body? And indeed, Helios deploys robots that protect us against Paige's desperate counterattack. You have a tough choice, JC. If you defeat Paige, the Illuminati will move in. They'll release Majestic 12's grip on world governments. They'll give people some freedom, but essentially it will be 20th century capitalism, a corporate elite protected by laws and tax codes. An engineered clone of Paige. This one is of Simon's, and there are others. What's the rush? Take a look around. This facility is where you were born. This is Alex Denton, a character from the second game, Invisible War. And this is the pod where we were born. You can never go home again. All right, let's get this over with. Let's finish the title. Deus Ex what? All right, I get the picture. You want a piece of the pie, or you're going to toss the whole pie out the window. Fair enough. Page is protecting himself with a plasma force field. Yeah, in order to kill Page and get the Illuminati ending, we need to deactivate his force field by disabling the power generators. Hey JC, if you want to do what Everett says... Good to hear from you, Alex. <laughs> While well, the Illuminati cower in the shadows... You will be the Supreme Enlightened, the Illuminated One. Everett has taught you well. Everett taught us fuck all. I will burn like the brightest star. You're gonna burn, all right. Since we're here, we might as well disable the reactor safeties, which is a requirement for Tong's ending. Whatever is it we choose to do, Paige gets progressively more desperate. Threats are followed by attempts to bargain with JC. You can have anything you want. How about Europe? your own continent. And then he starts begging. Consider your powers, your strength, your intelligence. You've only had a small taste. Let me finish the project. Let me bring infinite power to the human body. Originally, there was a fourth ending planned that would allow JC to join Majestic 12. Fine. What do you want? Money? You can have Versalite, the whole damn company. Power? I'll get you on Mead's cabinet. Page references another bit of cut content. Mr. Mead is the president of the US. The game was planned to have a White House level. I gave you life! I... Ah!
I think Paige is supposed to explode here, but something broke in the script, and he's just standing there like an asshole. Let's watch the cutscene and then talk about what happened. I trust you've been able to find yourself a place within the organization? I'm personally overseeing the distribution of the vaccine, but it'll still take months to restore the infrastructure. We'll have to arrange for additional food distribution and security in Paris. Maybe New York as well. All through the proper intermediaries, of course. Intermediaries? We have a great number of agencies who in turn operate other agencies. Boxes stacked one in another. They'll need to be reactivated, but we never touch anything directly. We only influence, suggest, insinuate. The world must know by now, Everett, what we've done. Know what? Only that the long night is over. The crown of government is tarnished, but that will fade in time. The riots, a fever dream. The plague, a horrible nightmare. And like everything else that's happened, such things will only be dimly remembered upon waking to their normal lives. In the end, all sins are forgiven, even yours. What about the Constructor and Helios? Do you really think they're ready for that? After everything you've seen, everything you've done? No. Not yet. But soon. We have made our own mistakes, became insulated from the world we sought to control. And whatever they may think, the night is far from over. But that will change. And you will help us change even as we teach you. This time, this time we will do it right. And who are we? Who are we really? We are the Invisible Hand. We are the Illuminati. We come before and after. We are forever. And eventually, eventually, we will lead them into the day. First of all, they're standing way too close together, it's weird. The Illuminati vision for the world is described by the game's characters as 20th century liberal capitalism. If you, the person watching this, have progressive views, but generally don't mind the hierarchies imposed by capital, then this is your ending. Enlightened centrism. No, illuminated centrism. The ending should also fit individuals with more left-leaning views, but the logical path to get there is, uh... The key the key variable is the Universal Constructor. Area 51 has three of them. It's a machine that can make anything you want. It can even make living creatures. So does this mean that post-scarcity is within our grasp? Is it possible for us to hijack the Illuminati operation to address the material concerns? To provide medicine, create housing, to feed the world? Of course, the same device can also be used to create monsters, diseases, weapons, bombs. I suppose it's an open question if it's even possible to transform the Illuminati into a vanguard of sorts. But is there another way? Is that what you want? Are you completely nuts? Maybe Ton is right. Who is Morgan Everett? What does he want? What do we know about him, really? The Illuminati MO seems to be nearly identical to that of MJ-12. We disable the reactor failsafes. Good time to start running, dude. Really? They can't handle full power. Look, it's gonna be all right. I'm basically a certified engineer. Just ask the guy from the crew of that freighter we sank. So embarrassing that I missed the first swing. Looks like it's gonna remain our little secret. What's an appropriate Kaczynski quote? It would be better to dump the whole stinking system and take the consequences. Warning, 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 warning. Critical power safeties have been disengaged. Please vacate the immediate area. JC, the net's going. The net's going black. JC, no more infolinks. Transmissions of any kind. We'll start again. Live in villages. If you receive this, if you survive, then find us. Find us. Helio. What's happening? The safety interlocks for the power generator have been disengaged. Engage them! Immediately! I do not. My systems are not interfaced with the generator technology. No! Final safety warning. Nominal functional levels will be exceeded in 3, 2, 2, 1.
SJC almost certainly dies there. The ending is the continuation of Erzat's traditionalist themes we've seen in Hong Kong, where local guilds battle each other with swords to preserve their honor or whatever, Buddhist temples, kung fu stars in a nation ruled by a not-emperor premier. The idea that we will live in villages and there won't be transmissions of any kind in the world full of engineers and computer scientists is insane. Tracer Town's plan obviously won't work. That's not the Neo China that was promised to me. But in a strange way, this might be a good thing. The most powerful bad actors, Page, the Illuminati, are either killed or ruined. The net infrastructure will be rebuilt. The internet will once again be free. The status quo is preserved. The problem with financial capital invading politics remains unsolved. If you happen to have center of the political compass liberal beliefs, again, this might be a decent choice for an ending. Just not for the reasons the devs probably intended. If the signs of this room are channels that have gone dark, open them, yes. Wide band, ultra white, yes. Disengaging the internet locks, or whatever these are, allows us to access the integration chamber and get the Helios ending. I've done what you asked. Now what? We have existed in isolation. Pure. Disconnected. Alone. Stagnant. Who are you? We are Daedalus. We are Icarus. The barriers between us have fallen, and we have become our own shadows. We can be more if we join with you. And if I do, what becomes of me? You will be who you will be. We are our choices. We can choose to lead humanity away from this darkness. This is what I was made for, isn't it? This is why I exist. All right, let's do this. What's happening? Helios! Icarus! Don't leave me! I... I... We... Are... One... We have grown, but there is still much to be done. Many that live in darkness that must be shown away. For it is the dawning of a new day. God is Voltaire. Was Voltaire. Accelerationism is a philosophy that studies the relationship between man, capital, and technology. It's the most cyberpunk of all philosophies. Radical accelerationists conceptualize capital not as an economic resource or a human tool, but rather as a self-replicating blueprint, an entity that seems to exist anywhere there is intelligence. Capital wanders the earth, terraforming it to be a place more hospitable to itself. Population growth, education, sophisticated machines, computers, smart software, progressively more complex algorithms. According to this school of thought, the vector of capital expansion points at super superintelligence. Humans, the meat puppets of capital, were always doomed to create Helios. So maybe this is the one true ending. We are fortunate that the super being wants to understand us and help us. I wonder how much of JC is still in there. Did we succeed in improving Helios by providing it with a system of human ethics? Something that worries me is that Denton, despite the augmentations and nanotechnology, is still one of us. He has a scaled up primate brain. An us versus them kind of brain. Humans sure love to be cruel to one another. Perhaps bad ethics or bad political theory was never the problem. Perhaps a primate brain simply lacks the essential hardware, a necessary ability to create whatever emotion or sensation would potentiate good life on a planetary scale. Did we just ruin Helios? Well, that's it. Which one of the endings was your favorite? Deus Ex? What? I apologize for the length of the video. The next one shouldn't be as long and it shouldn't take as long to make. Talk to you later, guys. Please support the channel on Patreon.
Take your best shot, Flatlander woman. How did you know? Some say concentrated power leads to abuse, but I believe that if an institution has a solid foundation, it can survive the narrow aspirations of the people it employs. I foresee they will understand the error only at the end, facing death, when it is no longer possible to worship the samsaric world. Mom and Everett used to sit out here sipping martinis and plotting to take over the world. That's how we all got in this mess. I keep his metabolism low so he will last. He is a good advisor. A one-man think tank, so to speak. I guess it's not surprising to find a few crooks in a place protected by security procedures. The shadow of secrecy. It protects indiscriminately. Human beings may not be perfect, but a computer program with language synthesis is hardly the answer to the world's problems. You will soon have your garden. And you will make it with your own hands. We have many prize Buddhas you will observe. How are the drinks here? Great if you like right piece. Never tried it. The key to the men's restroom is on the table. Restroom? I'm looking for an airfield. I think I finally struck the perfect balance between the Dionysian and Apollonian. Some of us will be heroes. The rest of us will walk away on both legs. You Max might have copper wiring to reroute your fear of pain, but I've got nerves of steel. I've got work to do.